following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are the West. The Alito Bearcats have become a recent powerhouse in Texas high school football, winning four titles in the last five seasons. Can they make it a fifth? They face the Tipple Wildcats coming up next. Texas high school football is a tradition unlike anywhere else. And winning a state championship is something that can be cherished for life. In the great state of Texas, football is king. From the wide open spaces out west to the big city. I'm Earl Campbell of Tyler Rose. One of Texas' greatest events, the high school football championships, is coming up next. AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, 16 weeks. You fight your way here to try to win a state title on the biggest stage in high school sports. Today, the 5A Division I state championship on the line. The 14-1 Alito Bearcats set to take on the 13-1 Wildcats from Temple High School, both with a combined seven state championships in their storied history. Hi again, everybody. Randy McAvoy alongside my partner, Indy Kalu, Brooke Bentley, Aaron Hardigan with the sideline reporting duties this afternoon as well. Great to have you with us. It is day three of a championship weekend. This is the start of a big day, the final day here in Arlington, Indy. Coming up at 4 o'clock, we've got Katie and Cedar Hill for the third time, third consecutive year they've met for a state championship. And tonight, Allen takes on Cy Ranch. Allen riding a 42-game winning streak. What a great day here. Oh, what a great day. When you talk about jam-packed with action, competition, you have teams who are used to coming here. You have teams coming for the first time. It is going to be a great day of football. All right, let's talk about this one now. Temple taking on Alito. Let's begin with the Wildcats. You've got to start, indeed, with their quarterback, Chad President outstanding numbers so far this season and he's got a terrific running back to hand the football off to as well too. Yeah, when you talk about Chad President, there's a reason why the Baylor Bears want this guy. He can beat you with his arm and he also picks yards with his legs. And what I really like about this high-powered offense, when things aren't going well for the passing game, you just hand the ball off to Jeff Carr and you see over 2,000 yards rushing. He takes a lot of pressure off Chad President. And it really doesn't stop just with those two. It's a full arsenal on the offensive side. All right, let's talk about Alito now. A veteran team, a veteran program that knows how to win state championships. They've won four out of the last five years, going for five out of six now. Let's we'll start with their quarterback, Luke Bishop. Big numbers. He manages the off as well, doesn't he? Right, and this stage is not too big for him. When you talk about a guy like Luke Bishop, last year when he played in this game, he was the 2013 MVP, so this is not too big of a stage. He's not going to be nervous. He's going to be the one keeping everybody calm and controlling, and he makes some great decisions out there. 31 touchdowns, only four interceptions. He doesn't force the ball at all. All right, it's going to be a lot of fun. Alito is back. They've made their way here to Arlington. Temple is back for the first time in a while. We're ready for kickoff. 5A Division One State Champion coming up next it's for you Santa come to get to a better state by DQ the stop sign of Texas for the best treats and eats and drinks in Texas stop at DQ and by Ford the dream big sales event is going on now at your local Texas Ford dealer Ford is the best in Texas we're back at AT&T Stadium in Arlington Texas Temple and Alito Big crowd filing in to start this fantastic day of football. The UIL State Championship weekend, Thursday, Friday, and three big ones today. And just moments ago, we were inside the Temple locker room. Let's listen in to head coach Mike Spratt. Play with integrity, play it physical, play it fast, play it nasty, play for Temple. You understand? Every man in here plays for each other. Every man in here plays for our town. Let's rock and roll. Let's don't forget Cantrell in the deal. You understand what I'm saying? Let's go play. Go be you. Go have fun. That's your key. All right? That's your key. Right. When this thing's over, we fix the road. All right, that'll get you fired up, won't it, indeed? It got me fired up, and one thing that I noticed, and you're going to hear from every coach, you're not just playing for the school, you're not just playing for each other. He said, let's play for the community, and you are representing your town when you play on this stage. All right, that was Coach Bradland from Temple, and just moments ago, 
Our Aaron Hardigan caught up with the head coach of Alito, Steve Wood. Thanks, Randy. Coach, certainly not your first rodeo here on this stage, but first as the head coach of this program. What sort of emotions come with that? Well, it's awful exciting. A little bit anxious, you know. It's that way before every football game, though. But this is a little different here, obviously. Excited to get it started. Let's go get rolling. You had five returners on offense, one on defense. You really weren't expected to be here. How do you put into words how these boys returned here, and what's the message today? Well, we're awful blessed. They're very committed. And they had heard that they might not be able to be here, and they kind of be able to get here, and they kind of took it personal. Uh, we got to go be physical. We got to go be the most physical football team today. All right, best of luck, Coach. Looking forward to it. Randy, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Aaron. Appreciate that. And we are ready for kickoff here this afternoon. Temple won the coin toss, so they will kick off. Reed Beerling will have the duties for Alita. And back to receive. For Temple, they will get things started. Jeff Carr and Clint Cole for the Wildcats. 5A Division I state championship. Massive crowd filing in. It's only going to get bigger, indeed, as this day continues here in Arlington. Jeff Carr will bring it out for Temple from the eight-yard line. He's met at the 19, gets free. Extra yardage out crossing the 30-yard line. So nice return to get this football game underway for Temple. A nice return, and that's the type of effort you're going to need to see throughout the day. When you look at the kickoff, the kickoff team did a very good job staying in their lanes, but they were not able to bring them down with the first contact because guys right now are so excited, and they know for a lot of these players, this is the last time they're ever going to strap up the pass. So expect a lot of emotion and a lot of big hits. There you see the numbers for Chad President. Looking forward to watch this young man go to work. Uh, what a season he has had and president immediately goes downfield deep ball just overthrown intended receiver was Aaron Freeman so right off from the get-go trying to establish something downfield here they're establishing something downfield and they're letting you know we are not afraid to go after you the very first play they go from fly route and just six to seven eight inches too far on that pass all right second down play at second and ten that's president, not much there. Take a look now at the starting lineups, four starting lineups up front for the Temple Wildcats. they got two seniors, Lopez and Locke, leading the way. And then the offensive weapons, Jeff Carr, we talked about him, big numbers this season, along with the quarterback, Chad President. President passes caught there around the 40-yard line. That's to Davian Curtis. And yeah, that's his number one target on this football team coming in with 41 catches. On the Alito side, defensively now up front. Take a look at that. Some talent led by James Williams. Good linebacking for Ryan Heiss. One of the best in the business there. And a very good secondary as well. Patrick Peek, the leading tackler of this Alito football team. First and 10 now. Pass is caught from the 41. That's his 40th catch of the season. He's one of the seniors. Patrick Peake right there on the stop for the Bearcats. As you see the replay, this is going to be important for the Temple wide receivers. First, you secure the ball, then get the yaks, the YACs, the yards after a catch. That's what they've been doing all year. They help Chad President a lot because not only are they catching his passes, but they're picking up yards on the run. The last play was a pickup of 12. Temple coming in against 13 and one and played a nine game regular season and then they've made the run in postseason play to make it to this point today. And the whole city is here to watch it. Pass is caught. That's Damian Curtis. He's got running room. Curtis in for the Temple touchdown. Just like we talked about big playmakers, it's not just one or two guys for the Temple offense. Whenever they get the ball in the hands of Jeff Carr, Aaron Freeman, Davian Curtis, expect big things to happen right there. Davian Curtis spit, splits the seams, and he just turns on the afterburners, and there is not a defensive back who can catch him. That was a 48-yard touchdown strike, and the Temple Wildcats go to work immediately, and they have set the tone of this football game. Point after attempt coming up. And the snap is good, and the kick is...
is also good for Temple. Cole Barton with the point after for the Wildcats. And with 10.26 to go here in the first quarter, Temple has struck first in the 5A Division I state championship game. We'll take a break from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. 48-yard touchdown. And Temple has a seven-point lead. Sunday night at 10 on Fox Sports Southwest. Seven nothing Temple leading Alito after the early strike in the Kalu 1026 left. Let's take a look at it once again. Chad President, plenty of time to throw the football in that opening drive, and David Curtis takes care of the rest. Yeah, plenty of time, and when he rolls out, he even buys himself more time. Then Davion Curtis does a good job finding the soft part of that zone defense, and once he finds it, gets the ball in his hands, there's no catch of Davion. Well, Temple will uh, kick it off, kick off duties. Belong to Jose Garcia. Ryan Newsom and Toby Gray back for Alito. That kick's out of bounds around the 30-yard line, so not exactly what you want on the kickoff. Not what you want, especially when you've got a guy like Luke Bishop, Luke Bishop coming out to uh, lead the Alito offense. Like we talked about, very efficient, picking up yards with his arm and with his legs. People keep talking about his touch passing. He's also a guy that's going to run and pick up first downs, 846 rushing yards on the season. He's the third leading rusher on the team, so he is a true dual threat. Gotta love having a veteran guy like right. Bishop out there. If you're the head coach, Steve Wood, first year head coach here at Alito, but a longtime coach in the system with Tim Buchanan. Decided to step down this past summer. A kick out of bounds by Temple on the kicking team. Be five yards from the out-of-bounds spot. First down. But as Coach Wood told us, he said, you know, you got so many leaders in this program that know the system, know how we do things here at Alito, and it starts with a guy like Luke Bishop. Alito will begin on the 34-yard line. And off. Sniffed out well by Temple. That was the handoff to Jess Anders. We'll talk a lot about Anders throughout the day. Travel Latouche with the stop for Temple. Four starting lineups up front for Alito. Very good offensive line made up of four seniors. Wes Harris, the lone underclassman, he's just a sophomore. And a lot of talent in this offense. Isaiah Mallory, Ryan Newsom, Luke Bishop, the list goes on. They pile up a lot of yards throughout the year and throughout their career at Alito. Bishop thanks to Anders, he'll hold on. After the 36, Ty McCorkle with the stop for the Temple Wildcats. Take a look at the four starting lineup for Temple. Brown, Hernandez, Hernandez, Graham. That Hernandez, Hernandez, the twin brothers out there. That's right. I mean, they're twin brothers, and they both get after you aggressively the same way. So they're going to be a handful for the offensive line. Markel Davis Potts, also a playmaker on this defense. Bishop misfires around the 46-yard line. Pass intended right there for Toby Gray. And I don't know if it was a misfire or miscommunication. It looks like Toby Gray, when he ended his route inside, uh, Luke Bishop was expecting him to break outside. He'll get that corrected on the sidelines. Brings up a fourth down. And the Alito Bearcats will punt it away. Garrett Yule will have the duties for Alito. Travell Latouche back to receive for Temple. He's around the 20-yard line. It'll hit just inside the 30. Latouche mishandles that. Well, moment there. Alito thought they might recover, but Temple recovers after a 44-yard punt. And the Temple Wildcats nursing a seven-point lead. They will get the football back here in Arlington. 9.02 to go. First quarter, Temple leading. Alito, 7-0 here in Arlington. I'm John. 
Back live, AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Indeed, this is what they come here to play for. That's what it's all about, to be able to take that back, not just to your town, but to have it in the school trophy case. Well, there's nothing like that feeling, I would imagine, on that field during these last couple of days. We've seen the state champions crown. They hoist it up, not only for their team, but for all the fans. They face their fan bases that come in droves here to come and support these football teams. It's an unbelievable feeling, and what an atmosphere here in Arlington. So Tipple uh, gets the football back. Their second series of the game will begin on their own 20-yard line after that 44-yard punt. And a handoff. Big room there for Jeff Carr. He's still on his feet. Crosses the 45 before he is uh, tripped up by Isaiah Mallory of Alito. When you talk about a balance attack, you're talking about a guy like Jeff Carr at the running back position. They can beat you through the air or on the ground, and you get a taste of why he had over 2,000 yards in the regular season. At the 27-yard pickup, that pass incomplete. Chad President, the senior. Almost 1,000 yards running the football as well as your indeed. Of course, over 2,400 yards through the air. A commit for the Baylor Bears since his sophomore year, actually. Marquez Hatcher with the carry, his first carry of the afternoon. Let's go down right now to one of our members of the broadcast team. We're on the sidelines on the Temple side. Let's check it out with Brooke Bentley. Hey, Brooke. Hey, Randy. Well, a little more on Chad President. He tore his ACL three games into last season. That was four months after he had committed to Baylor. He has come back stronger and faster. Coaches told me that he has gained muscle mass and improved his 40 time. We also should know that Coach Spradlin has an excellent relationship with Baylor coach Art Bryles. They played and coached together at the University of Houston. Spradlin saying Bryles really shaped him as a coach. Guys, back to you. All right, Brooke, thank you very much. Yes, Spradlin was the offensive line coach there at the University of Houston. And off, Hatcher tripped up at the 45. That's Patrick Beak again, N.D. He's had a couple of big plays already in this first quarter. Nice open field tackle. He was aggressive, but he was smart at the same time. Going for the legs, because once you take out the legs of these top running backs, there's obviously nothing they can do. But look at that open field tackle. He didn't have a clean tackle, but just by trying and attempting to wrap up the legs, he trips him up. After peak, 107 tackles coming into the football game today. Alito will take over again on offense after that stop. Bishop, big running room up the middle. Luke Bishop, daylight in front of him inside the 20. Inside the 10, brought down near the six-yard line. Big open gap just paving the way for him there. Right, when you have a gap like that, you credit the guys up front, a huge open gap, and you also credit the system. You don't know if he's going to hand it off to the tailback or if he's going to keep it, but look at that hole. Then after he gets through the first phase, the first level of that line, he turns on the speed, and if it isn't for a good angle, we're talking about a touchdown on that play. 48-yard run by Luke Bishop. Alito Bearcats knocking on the door now. First and goal to go from the seven-yard line. Bishop hands off. Jess Anders fights his way down to the two, close to the one-yard line. A couple of Wildcats in on the stop, including Taquan Graham. That's a five-yard pickup by Jess Anders. There's Graham, sophomore. He's the youngster on that defensive line for Temple. Just a sophomore. Pretty good size, though. 6'4", 240. That's very good size for a sophomore. And he's only going to continue to add muscle and speed as he gets older. He can be a force for the next two years. Second and goal to go for Alito. Jess Anders in for the Bearcat touchdown. Right there at the offensive line on the right side of the field. They go crashing down, and they leave that opening gap to the outside of the tackle. And just Andrews, all he has to do is hit the hole in a timely manner to pick up six points. Andrews finds the end zone set up by that big 48-yard run by Luke Bishop. And the point after, Reed Beerley coming up. It's up, and it's good. And at the 644 mark of the first quarter, 
It's Mr. Anders right there. Here's the finish. And you see the offensive linemen all crashing down inside, opening and excuse me, sealing off the defenders. Then Jess Anders, all he has to do is beat a defensive back to get into the end zone. All good on that Alito sideline. Let's take a look at the State Farm now. When you look at the Alito Bearcats, talk about championship history, ND. This is the seventh trip to the championship game. Five titles for the last five years. Just an unbelievable run. Steve Wood has been a part of that. He's been a longtime staff member here at Alito, taking over as head coach now after Tim Buchanan decided to step down this past summer. What a run he has had. Kind of putting Alito football back on the map here. You're right. The entire community credit. You even have to credit the junior high coaches to get these players ready for the system once they right. get to the high high school ranks. They expect to play 16 games every year. When the season starts, when they start two days in the high sun, they are expecting to have a 16 game season. The bar has been raised in Alito, certainly. Fans love their football in Alito, Texas. A lot of orange inside the building here today. Bearcats will kick it off. And it will be Jeff Carr bringing it out for Temple. A little trouble there in the 15-yard line. Bearcats wrap him up around the 16. And part of the reason Alito's had so much success, they take all three phases very serious. It's not just lip service when they talk about special teams. You know what? They put special teams on the same level as offense and defense. Right there on the kickoff, you see the lane integrity, and you see when they collapse to the runner at the exact right time, and they don't give them any space to pick up positive yards. From the 17-yard line, series number three for the Wildcats now. Chad Preston. Passes caught. Eric Freeman. He just turned the corner, got some extra yardage down that right side before he was knocked out by Bree, uh, Reed Smith. That's a pickup, a quick 20 for President. And right there, Freeman. Darren Harris, Jose Lopez, Mikeska, Townsend, Locke, they do a good job creating a nice, comfortable pocket for Chad President to get comfortable and be able to throw those accurate passes. The 37 yard line. The yardage once again. That's Hatcher. He just keeps moving those legs. Inside of Alito territory. And you see and you feel just by watching these kids, Marcus Hatcher with a second, third effort, how important it is for them to take that coveted trophy that we saw at the beginning of the break, tip back to their communities. 18 yards on that run by Marcus Hatcher. Hatcher's got more. Inside the 35 before he's tripped up close to the 32 yard line. Imagine. Jose Mallory with the stop along with Patrick Pete. What makes that play uh, work? Jose Lopez was the pulling guard, and Hatcher does a good job just waiting and he stays patient. And after he lets Jose Lopez pull, open up a space, then he hits the scene. Now when you look at the season, Marcus Hatcher has had over 1,700 yards. They really spread it around nicely. Pass is caught. From president to his tight end, Chris Minter, his first catch of the day, his 20th of the year. He's a big frame. That's an 11-yard pickup. Minter, 6'3", 230-pounder, senior tight end for the Temple Wildcats. Now Jeff Carr tried to go over the middle. Nothing there before he was shoved back. Larry Brown with the tackle, or 24 for Alito. Alito's defensive line stalemate, and they allowed, they're allowing their linebackers and cornerbacks to come with the run support. As long as you keep those offensive linemen at bay, then you shed them at the right time and you continue to stop the run, like they did on that play, not the entire season. Start by President already at 100 yards throwing the football. Yeah, close to the 20, maybe a couple of yards on that. TJ Zalar with the stop for Alito. Hitting the five-minute mark here, first quarter, 5A Division I state championship, AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Lower level, second level now starting to fill up. Really fun to see this as the day progresses. Here's President. Pass is caught at the 12. That's going to be another touchdown. Damian Curtis sneaks in for the Temple Wildcats again. 
David Curtis off to a big start. First with the receivers, they look the ball in, they secure the ball, then they get the yards after. They understand the prog progression. They're not thinking about the touchdown before they get the ball in their hands. They do a nice job playing disciplined ball and eyeing the ball to their hands. 20 yards on the touchdown. Temple now. They're going to mark him out of bounds at the four. No touchdown. But they take care of it right here. And it's a Temple touchdown from Marcus Hatcher. Four yards out. The pass play to Curtis set it up, and Hatcher finishes up from four yards out. Right now, the Alito coaches, they have some uh, X and O adjustments to do on the sideline because Temple, they're getting it done through the air and on the ground, and they look unstoppable early in the game. One after attempt, Cole Martin up and good for Temple. A lot of offense in this opening quarter. A big day so far for Temple quarterback Chad President. Also, Damian Curtis. Let's we'll take a look at this, how it was set up in the, the pass play for President to Curtis. Official right there on the sidelines. Thought he snuck in, but mm, that foot barely touched the sidelines, and he was out, but no problem here with Hatcher. Offensive lineman got away with a little bit of a hole, but you know what they say, if they don't call it, it didn't happen. But Jermaine Townsend uh, holding an uh, Alito defender, but the referees do not see it, and it just paves the way for Marcus Hatcher. No flag, no foul. 436 mark, first quarter. Offensive weapons there for Temple. Take a seat. Coach Spradlin. Talk about Coach Spradlin, fourth season here at Temple. Really saw this job as a great opportunity, a, a program with a storied history and also a great following, and he felt like he could do some special things here, and so far he has done just that. Spradlin's a product of Texas high school football. He played his ball at Dallas Carter back in the day. Temple will kick off now. Back to receive for Alito will be Toby Gray and Ryan Newsom. Brian Newsom right there. A weapon, another senior weapon for this Alito football team. Catch is made there at the 30-yard line. Short kick, so Bearcats will be in good position. Let's take it about talk about the road to the uh, state championship now for these Tipple Wildcats. Again, they played a nine-game regular season, then began their playoff run. And tell you what, you look at those numbers, no problem scoring the football. I know he wants to shore some things up defensively as well going into this one today. But uh, some tough matchups to get here. Richmond, you saw the ball game against Richmond and then George Grant's following week. And then last week against Vandergrift. Right, I was at that Richmond game. Richmond was undefeated at the time, but they did not have an answer for Temple's offense. All right, there's Alito. Bishop over the middle. Oh, it looked like it went through the hands of one receiver, and uh, Newsom merely brought that one in for the Bearcats. And with the Lido, they're understanding right now what Temple is giving them with the pass play. They're looking for the soft spot of the zone defense. They're trying to find those little openings, and it's going to be up to Luke Bishop to throw those accurate passes to get the ball to your receivers when you find the soft spots. Second down at 10 for the Bearcats. Again from the 31-yard line. Hand off. Anders. Wildcats right there to greet him. Gilberto Hernandez in on the stop. Had some help as well. You're going to hear the Hernandez name a lot. Like you mentioned, the two twins manning the inside of that defensive line, and they are stout. It is tough to move those guys because they play with leverage, and they have those big, strong trunks where they just get in their spot, and you cannot move them away. Gilberto and Sergio Hernandez right in the middle. They call him the law firm. Hernandez and Hernandez. <laughs> All right, Bishop now third and nine. Pass is caught close to the 45-yard line. That's Austin Summerhill with the catch. That's a pickup of 12. Summerhill, another senior for Alito. When you give Bishop this much time in the pocket, he will find the open receiver and get the ball to him successfully. That's his 20th catch of the season. 
They really spread it around between guys like Summerhill, Newsom, Logan Peterson, Isaiah Mallory, and Anders out of the backfield. A lot of targets for Luke Bishop. There's Bishop. He's got a crease as well. A lot of running room inside the 20. Will they catch him? Bishop in for the touchdown. 45 yards. Luke Bishop strikes again for Alito. Don't let the accurate arm fool you. He also has speed. When he rolls out and he doesn't see a receiver open, he says, I will take care of this myself. This is a guy you have to rally as a defensive back linebacker. When Luke Bishop tucks the ball, he turns into a running back, and you have to secure your angles. He is very fast, and he will run away from your entire defense, as you saw in that play. 55-yard touchdown run by Bishop. Of course, that big run on the last drive set up the short touchdown. So this time, Bishop takes it in. His fourth score of the day. Point after is up and good. So, so far, an afternoon of big plays between Alito and Temple. We're just getting warmed up. Still 3.27 to go first quarter. And we're tied at 14. Take a look at this again. And defensive coaches, defensive line coaches, they're always telling their guys, do not give up these passing lanes or running games, especially when you have an athletic quarterback like Luke Bishop, because when that hole opens up, it is wide open, and you have bad angles. You have bad angles when they try to pursue him. He is too fast to catch when you don't have the right angles. 55 yards, no problem for Luke Bishop. Think what he's done throughout his career. Of course, he's, the Bishop name goes way back with the Alito football. And his brother was also a quarterback. Well, we talk about the day uh, just starting here with Alito and Temple. We've got a couple more big ones today. Katie and Cedar Hill is the next ball game, 6A Division II. Well, you know what they meant last year, 5A Division II final right here. To be a rematch for a third straight year. Demarcus Lodge played a big role as a junior. Down 24-10. Took this direct snap, fourth down, put on a one-man show. Just took care of business as well. Justin McMillan fired his favorite target. Ensuing extra point. Longhorn shot Katie's defense. They changed the formation and ran it in. And won a game as Cedar Hill rallied for the victory over Katie to win the state championship here at AT&T Stadium. And in a couple hours, they will meet again. And the rubber match, round three, if you will. Katie at Cedar Hill, indeed. Katie's got several stars, including the running back, Rodney Anderson. Cedar Hill loaded with weapons as well, including where you look at the numbers, over 2,400 yards for each one. Right, talented players, talented individuals, but great programs. You're talking about third year in a row seeing each other. It's a testament to what these kids are going to get this far. This is Texas high school football. This is where high school football is king, and to continue to make it to the state championship, it just lets you know how much time and effort they put into it. Jeff Carr trying to turn the corner. Not much there. Preston Jeffries is helping the cause there, along with some help from the Alito Bearcats. Teammates stepping up. Jeffries leading the charge right there. He's a sophomore, 6'3", 195-pounder. Loss of two, so that's second down at 12 for the Wildcats. That was going to be picked off by Larry Brown of Alito. He might return this. President brings it down. Touchdown, Alito. by Larry Brown. This is the type of play a little needs to make on defense. Temple, you're not going to shut them down. You're going to try to slow them down. But when you get those turnovers and you can turn an interception into a big six, that is a big lift for this Alito defense. 31 yards on that interception return by Larry Brown, the junior linebacker. And they are a point after away now from taking a 21-14 lead. What a wild first quarter. Point after is up and good. So take a look at it again from this view. Take a look at what the uh, president was trying to do here. 
And he had his tight end open, but Chad President, this is something that even as a senior, you continue to learn. You cannot eye your receiver. You have to look off the defender. Larry Brown knew exactly where that ball was going the entire play. A couple of blocks on that return as well. President did his best to bring him down. Too late, though. Brown in for the touchdown. Official right there to make that call. They will kick it away. Larry Brown, something you'll remember in a state championship game. You'll remember that for life. <laughs> Congratulations, Larry Brown. And like most stories, about 20 years from now, that 31-yard return is, you won't believe I was at midfield right. and I brought back. <laughs> and don't forget, it'll be a one-handed interception That's as right. well. <laughs> no good start for the Alito Bearcats. Coach Steve Woods got to be pleased with this start. Did a lot of action, a lot of firepower in this opening quarter. Lynn Cole and Jeff Carr back. Short kick. David Curtis will bring it out. He's got some running room near midfield. Into Alito territory as well. David Curtis with the return. Wildcats in good shape as they get the football back. It's a 33 yard return. As impressive as that 33-yard return was, I really like the awareness from Davion Curtis. Before the people actually start to tackle him, when the defenders get a little closer, you see he puts both hands on the ball, and he makes sure that he does not turn that ball over. Very aware player. First and 10 now for the Temple Wildcats. 229 mark first quarter. They'll begin at the 49-yard line. And off to Hatcher. He might have lost a yard on that one. He is wrapped up quickly by the Alito defense. Second out of 12. They'll lose two yards on that play. Patrick Carr been busy. One two punch in his backfield for Temple. That pass intended for Tyler Hannon. A little too much. Hannon went upstairs to try to get it. Couldn't bring it in. Coverage on the play. Reed Smith and Ryan Heiss. Good effort going after the ball. It's one of those plays that you tell the quarterback take a little bit off, but you tell the receiver as well. If you can get two hands on the ball, you have to somehow come down with it. Clock stops. Third and 12 now for the 49. Lost a couple of yards. President in trouble. He's going to be brought up. Loose to the uh, tackle. Thought he's going to be brought down back at the 45. And that's nearly intercepted at the 30 yard line. The intended pass to Chris Minter, Jonathan Durham, right there for Alito. Looks like Patrick Peak may be down for the Bearcats. He's down right now about the 30 yard line. Bruce from Temple and now Alito stepping in to check on him. When we saw that play, it looked like he took an awkward fall, and he only had his back to break the fall, so it has to appear, it has to do with the way he landed on that play. Chad President got away with uh, a pass that I'm sure his coaches weren't too happy. You understand the young man's trying to make a play, but there are times where you just have to either take the sack, run out of bounds, and you don't want to force the ball anywhere. There's head coach Steve Wood, well respected in the Alito football family, and we mentioned longtime staff member stepping right in as head coach. And good news there for Patrick Peak. He's able to step up and walk it off. They need him out there. 107 tackles on the season. A couple interceptions as well. And he's already, we've already called his name, showing great run support early in this game. So this is definitely one of the defensive leaders that they want to see play and finish this game. Looks like he's going to be okay. We should see him back out there. So fourth down now. Ryan Newsom back to receive the punt from Temple. And that one's pulled off to the left as well. Some early kicking issues for Temple. They've got to get corrected. 
Right, one thing Alito's offense doesn't need is help with field position. You definitely want to get those kicks as deep and far as you can and those punts because Alito's offense, with the explosiveness of Luke Bishop, they can score from anywhere. You do not want to shorten that field for him. That was a 21-yard punt by Jordan Lee of Temple, so that gives Alito good field position here. Ryan Newsom, a little wildcat formation for Alito. He spins, crosses the 35-yard line. It's going to be a five, six-yard pickup there for Ryan Newsom, so a new, different look there for Alito there for a moment. Different look, but you know what? It's the same story. Put the ball in the hands of your ball care, excuse me, of your playmakers. Ryan Newsom over a thousand yards. He's the leading receiver on this team. If they could get him the ball just through a snap or through passing it, they want to get him in the open field. Bishop back out there now. They get it out to the close to 36 yard line. Second down and four for Alito. We approach the one minute mark of the opening quarter. Hand off to Jess Anders. Loose ball. Lita's going to recover. Ashton Logan with the big hit for Temple. Everybody's flying around in the football. Take a look at it again. There's Anders. Ball is the hit and the strip at the same time. Markel Davis Potts and Ashton Logan with a little one two punch action on uh, Jess Anders. And a nice heads up play by Austin Summer. He'll never give it up on the play. You see, he falls on a block. And when, the old, when the ball hits the turf, he is right there to recover it. Third down and one for Alito now. Hand off Anders again. And he'll have enough for the first down, the junior. 5'9", 165 pounds, 119 yards, two touchdowns against victory over John Tyler to get to this state championship game, a 44-14 to 14 victory a week ago for Alito. That's going to wrap up quarter number one here at AT&T Stadium. And what a quarter it has been. If you like offense... You've been treated to some serious offense in this opening frame between Temple and Alito. We go to the second quarter. Alito leading 21-14. We're coming right back. Another call, Santa. Hey, Santa. Oh, hello. Second quarter here at AT&T Stadium. Alito leading Temple 21-14. Right now, let's go to the sidelines. Check in with another member of our broadcast team, Aaron Harlegan, standing by with another bishop that's had some serious ties in the past to this Alito football program, Matthew Bishop. Yeah, Matt's, in fact, got three rings. He was part of that three-peat from 09 through 2011. So you've been on this stage quickly. What's going what We've talked about what insane of a ride this is right now. What's going right for Alito? What maybe needs some tweaking, Coach? Uh, not much needs tweaking when you've made it, you know, what, five state championships now in six years, or hopefully about to be five, or actually six if you count 98. But, uh, you know, it's it's an amazing town, amazing kids, amazing parents, and the coaches, you know, just everything is kind of perfect around here, it seems like. It's kind of a... Uh, I don't know, it's a good place to be. Now you've been on this stage before. What sort of words of wisdom did you give to Luke before this big stage today? Well, truly, I, I didn't have to give him too much because he was here last year and all. But uh, just trying to let him know that this, this moment doesn't happen, you know, for everybody. And to have the chance to go do it twice and just to be a part of it, it, it it's something you never forget. And it's a, it's, a good, it's a good ride. You just need to enjoy it and take it all in, really. It would be the most important thing, I would say. Matthew Bishop, former state champion, now coach of the Bearcats. Apparently, we're going to let you get back to those sidelines. Not a coach yet, but I'll be a coach soon. Don't worry. <laughs> He's working toward it, guys, and very much energetic here on the sidelines. Thanks, Matthew. Guys, back to you. All right, Aaron, appreciate that. Yeah, what a career he had in Alito. He would make an outstanding coach. That's what he, he wants to do. Sounds like he has some plans to get into that. There's his brother, Luke, rolling out on second and eight. Pass is caught just shy of the 40 yard line. Summerhill coming Summer up with the grab after he was able to recover that uh, fumble. So he's having an active series right now. It's a 12 yard pickup on the pass play to the 42 yard line is where they'll mark it. First and 10 now. Jess Anders, he 
He's been a busy guy today. Crossing the 30, still on his feet. He just keeps spinning there in D. Gets extra yardage while he's doing that. There's something about that spin, when those running backs spin, it makes your target that much more difficult to wrap up. You have to be careful and hold on to that ball, but Jess Andrews does not shy away from contact. He'll hit you. He'll spin to pick up the yards. He's a joy to watch. He's been a joy to watch all season, even last year. Ten carries, 38 yards for Jess Anders, and uh, what a story he has been. Battle a medical condition, lost a lot of weight back in the summer. They weren't sure what his status was going to be, but he has come back and he has produced for these Alito Bearcats. Tackle made by Quentin Smith. It's Ryan Newsom for Alito. And once again, they go to that wildcat look where they get the ball directly in the hands of Brian Newsom. And you see why when you see in the open field, you need three, four guys to bring him down. Now Ryan Newsom, you look at any recruiting board, he's a highly sought after recruit. He's a senior. Everybody in the country wants him. Over 30 offers coming Ryan Newsom's way. He can take his pick coming up in February. Down and five now for the 23. And off the Anders again, he's going to be brought down. Good open field tackle made by Vaderick Grayer. Grayer stepped up and brought him down. Grayer's a 5'9, 160 pound junior. And watch the wrap up. This is what coaches are always preaching wrap up. He doesn't give him a chance to spin out or to put a move because he aggressively fills that hole and he wraps up. Down at five now, the 23 yard line. Now, flag is down. A little movement there on Alito's side. <laughs> you see, see, coach on the sidelines, they just take a deep breath. That just <laughs> those kind of penalties drive those coaches crazy. It, it drives them crazy, especially on this stage when you're playing an opponent like Temple. You don't want to give them anything. Well, you look back at since August, how many reps they've done. It's like all right, sides. Yeah. Number 49 on defense. Bring the offensive tackle up in motion. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, instead it goes Temple's way. Alito was expecting that flag to be on them, but instead they get a little break here. On the defense. The reaction from uh, Logan Peterson in the Alito offense, I was also expecting the penalty to be on Alito, but the referees are saying that the defensive line of Temple drew them off sides. No first down now for Alito. On the 17 yard line, Luke Bishop. It's down close to the 12. Gonna be a quick five yards for Luke Bishop. Brought down by Quentin Smith. Quentin Smith a junior. Five sacks on the year. Just the hand on the helmet there. On Luke Bishop. The way his head snapped back, you heard the crowd. They wanted the face mask penalty. Good no call by the refs. They saw that there were no hands near the face mask, just on top of the helmet. And that's read well once again. Quentin Smith making the stop for the Wildcats. Smith's having a good ball game so far. Red run the entire time, and then you once the ball was in the hands of Ryan Newsom, the threat of a pass was gone. Now sometimes they put him in the Wildcat, but put the ball in his hands and he'll throw it. But like you mentioned, Quentin Smith was not fooled. As soon as Ryan Newsom received the ball, he was filling the hole. First down markers at the seven, so we're looking at a third and a long three to get this first down for the Bearcats. And off Anders, he's got enough running room. Anders in for the Alito touchdown. Good 
job up front, opening some space for Anders to do the damage here. And that seems to be the story throughout the day. Just big lanes opening up for the Alito offense, the offensive linemen. They're doing a nice, effective job with their seal blocks and getting pushed on the temple defense. They look at it again. We had to break. Anders gives Alito a 28-14 lead over Tiffin. championship is brought to you by State Farm. Visit texas.statefarm.com to get to a better state. By DQ, the stop sign of Texas. For the best treats and eats and drinks in Texas, stop at DQ. And by Ford, the Dream Big Sales event is going on now at your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Twenty-eight, fourteen. Alito leading Temple. Seven oh six left. Second quarter. Indy, let's take a look at that touchdown run once again from Jess Anders. And one thing I've noticed, Jess Anders, he has no quit in him. But watch these lanes open up. Look at the seal blocks. The offensive line all day have been dominant at contact. Having a good day, and he got the little uh, Johnny Mantell esque uh, <laughs> finish there. A lot of these guys have caught on to that, huh? Right, they have. <laughs> Scoring drive, 11 plays, 70 yards, 636 off the clock. Anders' second rushing touchdown of the ball game. Again, busy first half for both teams. Very quick start for Temple, but Alito has responded now. 28-14 lead, and they will uh, kick it off. They'll be brought out by Carr at the 19. He's has back quickly. Good special teams effort by the Bearcats. All right, time now to bring our special guest up in the booth. He has been a busy guy, along with the other members of the UIL staff. Bring in Dr. Jamie uh, Harrison, deputy, senior deputy director of the UIL. Always good to see you. Yeah, good to have you. Appreciate you having me on, and uh, appreciate you guys doing a great job covering all of these games. Well, work never stops. Uh, we've talked over the last couple of days. This isn't something two weeks ago you said, all right, let's start planning this. I mean, this is a major event that probably year-round you're working on. We, we, we not only work on a year-round, we're already working on next year's championships. When you have this many people in this quality of football, we want to make sure we bring a great event to the fans. Patrick with the carry there for Temple. Talk about the, the crowds we're, we're seeing right now. Today, Indy and I were talking about, you got the lower level, second level, now into the third level. This is what we're going to see today on the finale. A lot of fans, not only from the schools, but just football fans that want to come watch some exciting football here today. Yeah, great crowds. I'm expecting this one to reach somewhere between 30, 35,000. The crowds will only grow as the games go on. Pass intended there for Curtis. Temple fans want a flag down, nothing called. And it's going to be a third down play. Take a look at the replay here, Indy. All right, they want a foul, but no, they were just both going for the ball. Tripp got their feet uh, mixed up and tangled together. And once again, I've said it a couple of times, good no call by the rest, letting these athletes play the sport. Third down now for Temple. Jack President. Let's see if he's. Ruled out of bounds on that one. Brought in by Aaron Freeman. The president with a quick start today. The Salido defense starting to react again. Got that foot in bounds. He called it a catch, so they're measuring. I don't believe the catch is in question as whether or not he was able to get the first down. See where the mark is here. Right. Great job on that replay. There's the foot. They get that one foot in bounds. Aaron Freeman went up and got that one. That was a great catch. Great catch and knowing what's going on. And that's going to be enough for first down. So rule the catch in bounds. Chains will move for the Wildcats. So, Jamie, you got the, the, the big uh, three-day event here, but you wrap this up, you, you hit the winter months, and a lot coming up, more state championship action in all the sports. A lot of people are talking about basketball. In fact, after the long run in Austin, moving to San Antonio, talk about the decision to make that move and the reaction so far. It's a very difficult decision for our staff, having spent 92 years with Austin and the University of Texas as the home of the state basketball tournament. 
but with some of the hotel problems conflicting with other events, we're really happy about the way San Antonio has treated us. We think they're going to be a great host city, and it's going to be a wonderful event. Yeah, I guess by habit, this has been there year after year for decades in Austin, and, and change. You never know what the reaction you're going to get, but San Antonio, I think, will do a great job hosting them. So far, we've had positive reaction, and again, we think it's going to be a great experience for the kids who make it there and all of the fans that come to support them. That's Hatcher with the carry. Patrick Peake, who's back in there for Alito, making the stop. Second down and eight now for Temple. President pass is caught into Alito territory. Seastruck with the catch, his first of the day. Tackle made by Isaiah Mallory, also Peak. Good to see Peak back out there. He took that hit earlier and had to help him off, but he shook that off and right fell back in the football game. Yeah, fell awkwardly. It uh, looked like he hurt his back, but the trainers did a good job getting him back on the field. That was a 10 yard pickup on that play to Seastruck. President will carry. Inside the 40-yard line, another big gainer for the Wildcats. Skip it away here as we approach five minutes left in the first half here at AT&T Stadium. Really, I'll go back there. Pass out to Tyler Hand, and he took a big hit. Is that peak again? I think it is. It's peak again, and that's why we said it'll be very important for Alito's defense to get him back on the field, not just what he does against the pass, but with his run support. Love hearing that pop from up here. Microphones down there on the field, picking that up. Not much going there. It's the third and one play for Temple. So you've got the basketball. Tell us what else is going on with the UIL because it's not just about athletics. There's so much involved. You guys have other activities going up that are being uh, brought into the picture as well. Work never stops, but it's an exciting time. It's a very exciting time. Obviously, people know us for football and what a great event this is, but we actually have more competitions that aren't athletics than we do that are. And so we're adding some new activities. We're bringing in a, a cheer pilot program, trying to increase the safety of the, of the cheer competition. Uh, we're bringing in a new exciting robotics competition in our academics area. We just wrapped up our state marching band contest a few weeks ago in San Antonio. So we, we always have something going at UIL, and it certainly is not just athletics. Talk about health and safety and, and the importance of, of that. I know you, you guys spend a lot of attention on that, whether it's athletics, cheerleading, the health and safety concerns for these student athletes. Health and safety is absolutely our number one concern, and we're very fortunate in the state of Texas to have great partnerships with the Texas High School Coaches Association, who's doing a great job of educating coaches. Uh, our Athletic Trainers Association, Spanky Stevens, in the Texas Concussion Cooperative, we're partners with those guys. We've had great video PSAs playing about concussion awareness. So we are absolutely a leader in the country when it comes to health and safety, especially concussion related injuries. That was a third and six play pass intended for Aaron Freeman, Isaiah Mallory on the coverage for Alito. It's going to bring up a fourth down now. Just a little bit too far for Aaron Freeman with his outstretched arm, and it looks like fourth and six. Temple's going to go for it. They're going to reach the 27-yard line. Right now they're marking on the 33. Fourth down and six for Temple. Trying to get some momentum back in this football game, down 14. President. Catch is made by Seastruck. His second catch, Ryan Heiss with the coverage for Alito. Deion Seastruck, that's the name, the Seastruck name, of course. Baylor. Yep. Lake. First cousin. Lake uh, right. First cousins, uh, according to the coach. But it looks like the offense was off to an early start on that play. This is huddling up. Call will be coming here momentarily. The 
It's a Houston based officiating crew today. Legal substitution on the defense, number 34 on the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. All right, substitution penalty. And the Wildcats get a little break here. But uh, Alito. Yeah, a little confusion right there, Indy. The timeout called now, 3.25 to go here in the first half. Great start to the 5A Division I State Football Championship game. And can't say enough about the uh, job you guys have done and, and uh, will continue to do. Anything else on the, on the horizon for UIL you want to get the word out? This is a busy time for you guys. Holiday season, you guys are here for three, three straight days. Non-stop action and family back in town. You're ready for the holiday break, huh? Yes, this is a great way to for all of these families. If you if you gave these fans the opportunity to have a, a home Christmas party or to be here watching these games, I promise you they would pick that. It is tough on our staff, but our staff does such a great job. I'm missing a Christmas party at my Aunt Lucille's house right now. <laughs> I wish go. I could be there with the family, but this <laughs> is not a bad alternative. Absolutely. We appreciate the time and uh, tell you what, continued success of Jamie Harrison. Deputy Director of the UIL. Great job by the staff, and we'll continue to talk to members of the staff throughout the day. It's going to be a great day here in Arlington. Thanks, Thank man. you. Good to see you again. Fort Halftime Show coming up. A lot to get to. Timeout continues here. Rick Renner, Greg Tepper, Kent Purcell. They'll handle the duties here at the stadium. We'll review the record-setting Friday as well. What a set of games yesterday. Oh. Just unbelievable finishes, including the nightcap last night when Ennis scored late to claim that championship as well. Great battle with Cedar Park. Halftime show coming up. All right, this is the 14th play of the drive right now for Temple. President crossing the 15. And the clock. It's 3.20 left in the first, so if you're Temple now, you had the quick start. They didn't waste any time at all, Indy, getting on the board, but Alito's kind of taken over the momentum shift ever since that midway first quarter. And it goes to show Alito's used to being here. When they got down early, they didn't let the momentum, uh, they didn't let Temple run away with the momentum. They made big plays on Alito, and now Alito has the momentum. But if Temple can score here before halftime, uh, you can start to see that shift again. Jonathan Durham and James Williams on the uh, stops for Alito there on Hatcher. You see James Williams there, a big active defensive player, big defensive lineman, over 100 tackles. You see him all over the field. Hatcher's got loose. Touchdown, Temple. And a flag down. We'll see what that's all about. Looks like might be coming back. Oh, number 72 on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. The holding call on Temple will bring back this touchdown run by Marcus Hatcher. <laughs> Back to the 17 now. President feeling some pressure, gets the throw off. Little short pass intended right there for Davian Curtis. That was definitely a throw Chad President would like to have back. He skips it on the ground. Uh, well, when you see the throwing motion, when you see exactly where that ball landed, you wonder if his arm was tipped. He didn't seem to have much pressure, so that's just an errant pass by a very good quarterback. Third down and 13. President in the corner looking for Tyler Hannon. Isaiah Mallory right there got a hand on it as well, so a fourth down play coming up for the Tipple Wildcats. 2.21 left here in the first half. 
And sometimes as a defender, a defensive back, all you have to do is get in the way of the receiver. Isaiah Mallory, he tipped the ball, but being in the face of the wide receiver and not allowing the wide receiver to look the ball in is what made that play. No long caps will tip the field goal. Cole Mark with the duties. They'll mark it at the 25-yard line, 35-yard attempt coming up by Cole Martin. High snap, gets it down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 35-yard field goal by Cole Martin. The junior for the Tipple Wildcats. And now it's a 28-17 lead for Alita. Late first half. 28-17, Alito leading Temple. We talk about all the great matchups in D, especially yesterday as well. Take a look at one of the good ones, Class 4A Division I State Championship. Argyle taking on Navasota last night. With a minute left, Dan Epler sneaks into the end zone, headed to overtime. Still tied up after the first overtime. Epler to Tredavia Dixon in the end zone. Officials actually call that a completed catch. Navasota goes up by seven. Argyle with one last chance of fourth down, but good convert. Rattlers hang on to win their second state title in three years. A double overtime thriller over Argyle last night. Look at that celebration, and look at these numbers put up last night. They've done it all season, and they finished in style, didn't they? And they're probably still sleeping right now because they <laughs> earned the rest. We watched that game. My eyes were glued to the television. They did a great job. It was just fun to watch, and that's what Texas football is all about. For Davia Dixon, they're both juniors, by the way, Dixon and Epler. Dixon, one of the top receivers in the nation, top one or two, depending on which service you're looking at, but he's big time. He's committed to Baylor University already. He's both have another season to go in Navasota. All right, Navasota, or Pimple will kick off here. It's a short kickoff, and that's brought in by Austin Summerhill. So Navasota wins last night. Ennis won the nightcap as well. Great Friday of football here in Arlington, and this is game one of three here on Super Saturday. Let's just call it that, a Super yeah, Saturday like that. Super Saturday in Texas. You see the best high school teams really fighting it out to take that trophy home. And these kids, they will remember this game for the rest of their lives. Well, total play count so far in this first half. Dominated by Temple, yet they're trailing. Temple with 41 plays. Alito just 21. They got 28 points to show for it. Luke Bishop takes a tackle, breaks free for an extra four or five. Nice yardage on that carry by Bishop. We hit the two-minute mark here in the first half. Very balanced attack when you look at this Alito Bearcat offense, ND. Luke Bishop, of course, to throw the football over 2,500 yards. And heck, when you got weapons like Ryan Newsom and Toby Gray, and then you got a phenomenal backfield. That's a good balance. That's what they like to keep every week. Second out of three at that first carry, seven. Pressure on Luke Bishop. Nipple fans on their feet. They want a flag on that for grounding, but nothing called from the officials. I wanted to wait because I was going to give Luke Bishop credit for not just taking the sack and throwing the ball away. But the referees, you may see a late flag come in here, depending on where or if he had a receiver that was close by. He's pulling it out. There it is. <laughs> Late's better than never That's sometimes. <laughs> Temple fans high-fiving each other as if they go. They forced that ball there by the officials. <laughs> Intentional grounding. Number four on the offense. Also a loss of down. Third down. Yeah, good pressure by Temple. Got the throw off, there's nobody home there. No loss of down on that play. Brings up third and 13 now for Alito. Still plenty of time, minute 30 to go. Temple trying to make a stop here. From the 33-yard line. Bishop up the middle, running across the 40, 45. 
close to the 48-yard line. Brought down by Quinn Smith. Nice run by Luke Bishop of 15 yards. So tough to prepare for a guy like Luke Bishop. You have your rush lanes. When you're in the third and 13, you're expecting passes as a defensive lineman. And when he's able to take advantage of those open lanes the way he does, it makes it tough to defend a guy like Luke Bishop. Goes to Ted now. Bishop. Pass is caught Toby Gray at midfield. Quinn Smith and Vadera Grayer on the tackle for Temple. Inside a minute to go now. 11 point lead for the Alito Bearcats. Looking for their fifth state title in the last six years. Bishop rolls out, fires and hits. Southern down the right sideline. Still on his feet, but they're going to say he went out of bounds. Summerhill's having a heck of a first half. Not only is he making some great catches, he never quits on a play. He recovered a fumble that could have been disastrous for Alito, but he's also showing you his talent as a receiver and what he can do after the catch. This is a 40-yard pickup, and there's the damage right there. Good speed. Logan tracked it down just enough to knock him out of bounds. Right there. No 40 yards on the pickup. Yeah, he's saying just <laughs> inches away there. <laughs> First and goal to go now from the 10 for Alito. Anders takes a hit, stumbles forward inside the five yard line. And a timeout, Alito will stop the clock with 30 seconds left. Jess Anders has been busy today. We'll talk it over, Steve Wood and company. Up 11, trying to finish strong here. Of course, the second game here from AT&T Stadium, the Class 6A Division II State Championship. Cedar Hill has arrived at the building, ND. You notice the bus with all the other schools. You, there was these out-of-town luxury buses, but they just said, you know, it's down the street. We're going to take yeah, the school bus. Probably about a half hour away. <laughs> right. Joey McGuire, longtime coach there. Tell you what, that's uh, been a great storyline. Three consecutive years they faced that's off. Amazing. They split the last two years. Katie felt like that one got away a year ago. They blew the lead and made some mistakes that you typically don't see with a KD football team, but Cedar Hill's a fantastic team, well-coached, a lot of athletes, and now they beat again. It's, it's been great for football. Great for football, great for the two communities, and just wait to see the energy of that game. All these games have been energetic, high effort. Uh, that one's going to have a little extra off, too, because like you said, KD felt like they let one slip. Second and goal to go from the five for Alito. Bishop looking, fires, touchdown, Bearcats. Summerhill said he was going to get in that end zone one way or another. So Say, I set it up. <laughs> Let me finish it off here. And he finished it quite well. Five-yard touchdown from Luke Bishop to Austin Summerhill. One after attempt for Alito coming up. Ben Rogers, number 85, out there for the point after. Offsides, number 99 on the defense. After this is to the goal, beat the try. Even with Temple's quick strike offense, they can't keep trading touchdowns with Alito. Right now, they are going to have to figure out a way to stop this Alito high power offense. 23 seconds left. Point after. Rodgers. Kick is up and good for the Bearcats. Your coach, that's what you want. Score late. Go to the locker room with a nice, nice cushion here in the championship game. Bishop, 5 of 7, 72 yards. Five straight completions for Luke Bishop. 
including this one to cap it off on the touchdown pass. What I like about this play with Luke Bishop, he lets the routes develop. You heard coaches say let the play develop. He doesn't try to force it in there early. He lets his wide receivers finish their routes until they get to the open spot on the field. This is so impressive to watch. Like I said, I had the privilege of calling the game last year when Luke Bishop was the MVP. And as I watch the game, I'm reminded, oh, yeah, he's great in all aspects of the game, whether it's throwing, running, leading the team, the timing. He is a very fun quarterback to watch. There's a shot of Austin Summerhill. You mentioned what a game he's having. But he came in, obviously, on the depth chart. There's no doubt about that. But he had only 19 catches on the whole year coming in. All of a sudden, what a day he's having. Capping off on that touchdown pass, seven plays, 65 yard drive, but he's kind of been the, the X factor on this offense today. This Temple, of course, probably keying in on Ryan Newsom, who's had kind of a quiet day to this point. And Toby Gray, who's had a bunch of catches this season as well. Well, the defender there on the special teams as David Curtis attempted to bring it out for Temple. Nothing going there, so you got 18 seconds left. You're down 35-17. Might just want to take a knee, head to the locker room, and regroup a little bit. You don't want to do anything that uh, is really going to hurt you even more. With 18 seconds, even though you have timeouts, I just don't see what Temple could possibly do to get on the board. So the safe bet would be take a knee, regroup at, at halftime, and make the adjustments you're going to need for the second half. Well, Temple showed early the firepower they have, and the Alito defense has made some adjustments. And Settle down, but we know the attack that the Wildcats bring night in and night out. So we'll see what they do at halftime for Coach Mike Spradlin. They got a little work to do. Down to 18 points as the first half comes to a close for Chad President of the Tipple Wildcats. The little Bearcats. This is how they wanted to script it. They're in good shape right now, but this is a state championship game in Texas, UIL. You never know what you're going to see. It's never over till the clock hits zero in that fourth quarter, and it sets up for an exciting second half, Indy. Right now, let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Aaron Hardigan, who's standing by with Alito coach Steve Wood. Coach, it's been an absolute shootout here. What's it going to take to come out on top against these guys? Well, it's going to be a battle. Those guys are so potent on offense. I'm so proud of our offense, but, you know, we just got to get one or two stops and hope our offense keep hanging in there. What's going well for you? What needs adjusting in the second? Well, Luke Bishop's going well for us right now. He's a gamer, you know, and it's a it's pretty big game, and that's the kind of game he wants. But we've got to get a little better back there in the back end on sec in the secondary. They've got some speed, and they're chunking it around, so we got to cover. Let you get into that locker room with the boys. Appreciate it, Coach. See you in the second. Alito leading Temple at the break. Up next, reaction to it all on the Ford Halftime Show after this. Back live at AT&T Stadium here in Arlington. 5A Division I State Championship. Alito and Temple making their way out. Back onto the field, ready to start the second half. Alito on top, 35-17. Randy McAvoy, Indy Kalu. What a wild first half. Plenty of offense as advertised, I guess, coming into this game. Yeah, somebody's going to have to play some defense, especially the Temple Wildcats. They got off to an early start, but they just were never able to get back into that rhythm on offense. And Alito, they really look unstoppable, beating people through the air and on the ground. Let's take a look at some of the highlights now for the first half. We had plenty to go around for both teams. It was really a good start for Temple here. Indeed, Chad President hooking up with Curtis got kind of things started. Hey, and you thought that's how the day was going to go for them, but Alito's defense did a good job blowing up and stopping them but you see right there also getting a touchdown on the ground here's the big run now from luke bishop of alito 55 yards to the house for the touchdown to get him on the board and this is he just picked up where he left off last year as the mvp of this game and he's having a similar half Anders also been active for this uh, alito offense uh, so far in this first half and there's the late touchdown pass from Bishop to Summerhill. A good momentum booster going to the locker room. Yeah, Summerhill has been Johnny on the spot. He's recovering fumbles and making nice catches. All right, you look at the breakdown now. First half stats, 15 first downs for Temple. 
rushing yards uh, for both teams. Alito having their way, finding some holes right now. The passing game for Temple and Chad President right now, 153 yards. Let's check in right now with Brooke Bentley. She's with Temple head coach Mike Spradlin. Coach, your offense out of its rhythm after that pick six. How do you get him back on tempo? Well, we just got to. I mean, that's that's the whole point. I mean, we you know we did take it down, drove it down, scored a touchdown, got a call back on a you know, on a holding call. We just got to get back in our rhythm and do what we do. I mean, that's 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 what we've told our kids. We're going to lay it out there and go. How does your defense slow down Luke Bishop? Well, I mean, that's part of our deal right now. We're on our heels. We're catching. You know. Uh, that's kind of what we talk to our kids about. I mean, we got to get off our heels and on our toes and, and trigger and get downhill and, 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 and be aggressive and make things happen. Coach, good luck in the second All half. Right. Randy, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Brooke. Appreciate it. Lido working their way out. Stretching, getting ready for the second half up 35-17. Again, another half to go here at AT&T Stadium. Right now, let's check in testing with Neil one, two, Beasley. One, two. He's getting ready down below here at AT&T Stadium. Joey McGuire, the head coach of Cedar Hill. Cedar Hill has arrived for their next ball game against Katie. McGuire of Cedar Hill and coach, if familiarity breeds contempt, you must seethe when you hear the name Katie. Uh, man, I'll tell you, I don't know. I've said it all week. Like, I don't know if anybody's excited about playing Katie three times, but if we're going to play Katie in the state championship for three times in a row, then we'll take it. Great football team. You got them last year, so what do you got to do now to make it back-to-back? -back? Uh, we got to do a great job tackling uh, Anderson. I mean, he's as good a back as there is in the country. Uh, gets a lot of yards after contact. And then we've got to do what we've done the last few weeks on offense. We've got to score a lot of points. That's going to be tough to do against a great defense, but we're going to have to score today. Good luck. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Neil. Appreciate that. Coach McGuire and Cedar Hill getting ready for their matchup with the Katy Tigers. Again, that's set for 4 o'clock here at AT&T Stadium. There's the matchup, the rubber match, as they call it, for a third straight year. Numbers by Rodney Anderson and Cedar Hill's outstanding player, Cedric Ware, over 2,400 yards for each of them. 37 touchdowns for Rodney Anderson, 34 for Ware. This sets up as, again, three great matchups today. A lot of people are talking about this one here at game two today. Uh, right. I mean, you're talking about powerhouses when you talk about Cedar Hill and Katie. Katie seems they are here every other year. Well, Cedar Hill's been here the last three years. And, and now you're starting to have that rivalry. Who's going to represent? Who's going to take that trophy back? And like what you called it, the rubber match, this is the game a lot of people are waiting for. Temple Wildcats got some work to do now, down 35 to 17. Take a look now. We talk about that Cedar Hill Katie matchup. We saw the 2013 game just a little while ago. Of course, they met in 2012 as well. Katie looking to add to their trophy collection as they battled Cedar Hill. Adam Taylor show for Katie. Two yard plunge, 17 yard scamper set the tempo for the Katie. Tigers as they built a 14-3 lead in the first half. Cedar Hill would not go away. Damian Hobbs to Isaiah Harris for the touchdown in the fourth. Put the Longhorns on top of the Tigers. Taylor would not be denied. 21-24-21 deficit. The future Nebraska Cornhusker took the toss, outran everybody. 56-yard game-winning touchdown. He had 277 yards, five scores on the ground. Katie won a thriller 35-24 in the first installment of this great rivalry. Again, that game is coming up next here. 6A Division II state championship, followed by the 6A D1 contest between Cy Ranch and Allen here tonight, capping off a busy day here in Arlington. We will kick it off, get this second half underway. Temple will kick off to Alito. Toby Gray and Ryan Newsom back for the Bearcats. Martin has the honors for the Wildcats. So, tell you what, you're down 35 17. This is an important opening series of the second half for the Wildcats defensively to make a statement and make a big stop. You know, this is huge, and they're going to, you know, have to execute the adjustments that were made. And I'm sure the coaches did a good job saying this is what we need to do. These are the mistakes that we made in the first half. But you're absolutely right. This opening drive is a big, big series for that Temple defense because they're going to have to figure out a way to slow down this Alito offense. Yeah, Steve Wood. 
in first year head coach long time assistant at a program he has stepped right in he he said you know what I, I came in I didn't want to make a lot of changes it's, we've done things pretty well here for quite some time we've got a, kind of a well-oiled machine and the way we do things in our system if it ain't broke don't fix it <laughs> there's nothing to fix don't fix it you know starts on their 34 yard line handoff will go to Jess Anders Get it out to 36-37. Markel Davis Potts with the tackle for Temple. He's a senior. Had a good season so far. 62 tackles on the year coming in today. A couple of sacks. Five forced fumbles. He's very active on this Temple defense. Second down and six. That was a four-yard pickup. Bishop takes the hand off to Anders, wants to go deep. Has Newsom down there, got his hands on it, looked like it bounced right off of it. He just lofted it up there for Newsom. Eduardo Escobedo on the coverage for Temple. And Newsom's the type of receiver you do just throw the ball up and let him catch it at the highest point. You expect him to win his battles against the defensive backs, but he was not able to come down with it. Nice pass by Luke Bishop. It hits him right in the bread basket, but he's not able to secure that ball on his way down. Third down and six now. Talk about Temple trying to make a statement here to open the second half. They trail by 18. Bishop. There's some pressure. Gets loose. Tripped up. He's going to be short of the first down. Ty McCorkle right there to make the tackle on Bishop. Shoestring tackle by McCorkle or Luke Bishop picks up that first down. This is what makes him tough to defend when he drops back for a pass. If the pass isn't there, he's athletic, quick, strong enough to run for the first down. But McCorkle doing a good job tying up those shoelaces and not letting him bounce out for the first down. No fourth down. They are forced to punt the football away. And they will do that now. Early third quarter. Ravel Latouche back for Temple. That one will bounce around the 26 and settle close to that 20 yard line. So that's Temple will get the football. A 39 yard punt. And the Wildcats will get their first look at it offensively here this afternoon to begin the second half. Important drive coming up now for Chad President. And this Temple Wildcat offense, you saw the highlights in the first half. They were really spreading it around. You see his numbers as well. In the 11 of 21, 153. Touchdown. He also had that interception. Returned for a touchdown. That cost him. Pitch out to Jeff Carr. Crosses the 25. Got a flag down. Right bad. Back towards the line of scrimmage. Larry Brown and Caleb Primera in on the stop there for the Bearcats. Oh, number 77 on the offense. 10 yard penalty, feet first down. And that's on Darren Harris. There he is, 6'5, 265 pound left tackle for Temple. He's a junior. Their offensive line made up of three juniors. They've got two seniors on the O-line for Temple. The left guard, Jose Lopez, and the right tackle, Travis Locke. Coach Mike Spradley. Travis Locke on his way to Stephen F. Austin to continue this football. Another flag is down. Pass is caught out to Tyler Hannon. He crosses the 20-yard line. Ryan Heiss helping to make the stop for Alito. Offsides, defense, number 40. That penalty will be declined. Second down. All right, second down now coming up for Temple. Last state title was 1992. They are back again trying to win one today. They'll need a comeback here in the second half. This car tries to turn the corner. 
maybe a yard on that. Jack McAdams, the junior, number 54, helped make it a stop for the Alito Bearcats. Right now, the Alito defense, they are pursuing Jeff Carr. They're not allow, uh, allowing him to get in the open, to get to that second level. That's when he's dangerous. That's why he has over 2,000 yards. But right now, the front seven for Alito's defense, they're keeping him bottled in. Third and eight play now for Tipple. Pressure coming on President. He takes a hit, gets away, still on his feet. It's a block, trying to look downfield. Pass is nearly caught at the 40, but broke it up. Pass intended for Chris Minter. President was on the run. Preston Jeffries on the coverage for Alito. That could have been picked off. Kind of lofted that one up there. Could have been picked off, and there are a couple of uh, could have been holding calls on that play as those offensive linemen were trying to protect Chad President. But the refs didn't see it. They didn't call it. They have been all over Chad President this series. They're not allowing him to settle down and get comfortable. Patrick Peak also helping in on that for the Bearcats. So the Wildcats, nothing on that first series. Fourth down, they're going to punt it away here. Ryan Dusum is back for Alito. That'll hit him 36. He'll field it at the 29. He's being chased down. Good special teams by the Tipple Wildcats. You don't ever want to fault a young man for trying to make something big happen. High sight 2020. Looking back on that, he should have just secured the ball and tried to go upfield, but he was trying to make a big play. That was a 47-yard punt. They lost 10 more. We're going to break. But right now, a special message from Derek Quinn. Two to play, 35-17. As Alito gets the football back here. There's an 18 point lead in D. So, so far, both teams with a, a series each here in the third quarter. They both come up empty. Minor victory for the first series of the second half for the Temple defense. They proved to themselves that they can get a three and out on Alito's offense. Now they're going to have to do it consistently to get back on this game. This is hands to Anders. He is tripped up. Trying to turn that corner. Clint Cole made some the initial contact. Also, some help from. Ashton Logan, number 22. Temple defense setting the edge, not allowing him to have anywhere to turn upfield, so he just kept running east and west. Had an angle to pick up some positive yards, but there was just never that opening there for him to put his foot in the turf and get upfield. A couple of yards, so it's a second down at eight now. They get it out to the 22-yard line. Ready back, boy, in the clue, Brooke Bentley, Aaron Hardigan. Aaron working the sidelines for us today. Davis Potts on the stop for Temple. Another carry from Luke Bishop. He's so explosive. The way he accelerates once he decides to tuck the ball and run. By the time your first offender gets to him, he's already up the field. Just an impressive athlete. Can't say it enough. Uh, you've seen it on the ground. You've seen it in the air. You've seen why he won the MVP last year. And if he keeps playing like the way he's playing early in this game, he's probably going to have another MVP. Coach. His average is uh, 171 yards through the air per game this season. Hand off there to Anders. Uh, nice open field tackle there by Quinton Smith. Anders tried to hop a little quick step out. Quinton Smith was right there to greet him. Not a big game, but enough to get the first down and keep the drive going. And anytime you have another start to a drive with this series with Luke Wilson, excuse me, Luke Bishop uh, at the helm, anything can happen. It's very important for Temple's defense to get the punter back on the field. First and 10, change move for Alito. Make the handoff to Andrew. This is going to be Newsom. Around the end, got some runner room down that right side. He's brought down by Quentin Smith. The fake there to Jess Anders and Ryan Newsom went to work. Good speed, man. He gets some open field for Newsom. He's gonna do some damage. That was a 16-yard pickup. Just nice play calling by the Alito offense. They don't force it. They're not trying to force the ball in the hands of any one particular player. But they hit you with the pass. They hit you with the run, with the reverses. They have a bunch of different calls that make it tough to defend. Rushing yards, big day for Alito so far, over 200 yards at this point. There's Anders again. He's 
Kind of been the workhorse in this backfield for the Bearcats. Quinn Smith again with the stop. Quinn Smith's been a busy guy for Temple today. Jess Anders again, 5'9, 165 pound. Did a good job for Alito. He's a senior. And a UT San Antonio commit right now. More signing day coming up in February. A lot of these guys on both sides, both sidelines, Temple and Alito, will take their talents to the next level. Bishop, nothing downfield, chased out of the pocket, gets that one off around the 40. I believe that was Anders. That's a 12-yard pickup. So Bishop in trouble. Got out of that pocket, unloaded. And it's so frustrating for the defense when you're putting pressure on the quarterback, the pocket is collapsing. He extends the play time and time again with his legs, and he's accurate on the run. So even when you have him bottled up and you have him on the run, he's still an accurate passer, and it just makes it that much more tougher to defend. The first down, first and 10 now as they reach the 41-yard line of Temple. Here's Bishop. And he's going to be brought down. Nice play by Quentin Smith who broke through to make that stop. As much as we talk about Luke Bishop, this series on the defensive side for Temple has been all about Quentin Smith. He's called his name multiple times from tackles, sacks, defending the guys on the pass play. He's been all over the field. Those are the type of plays that they're going to have to have because Temple cannot afford to give up another touchdown on this drive. Take a look at it again. He was right there to greet Bishop. Was not going to let him get away there, was he? Not at all. Kept his shoulder pass square, and he was not kicked out by the pitcher. Dozen tackles already for Quentin Smith. Second down and 14 now for the loss of four. With more pressure. Gets that one off before he came down. Might do some in the vicinity. So. Clock stops now, five minute mark, third quarter. During the halftime speech, during the adjustment period at halftime, this is where the Temple defensive coaches have to prepare them for. Got a flag down now. They may call grounding on this. Well, Newsom was not far away from that. We'll see as they talk be the second ground call of the day if it holds. The pass did not cross the line of scrimmage. That could be the call here. Potential grinding. Number four on the offense. It's a loss of down. Spot foul. Third down. That was a loss of down. Up a third down and long now, about 28 to go. First down markers way down there by the 30 yard line for Alita. Pass intended for Anders just over his fingertips. That's going to bring up a fourth down. With the rushers bringing that blitzer from the defensive back, that would be interesting if Andrews was able to come down with that ball because he had a lot of open field and a lot of friendly blockers in front of him. But without the completion, it doesn't really matter. They'll punt it away. Latouche. Back for Temple. They'll punt it away here. Inside five to go here at the third. Latouche will field it. Recovers and met quickly around the 26 yard line. That's a 36 yard punt. Three yard return, and Chad President and the Temple Wildcats down to 18 with work to do here in the third quarter. Now the pressure's on the Temple offense during the entire first half. The pressure was on that Temple defense being able to try to stop Alito. They've done it twice, and now so the pressure's on Temple. All right, we're going to take a break. 4.45 to go third quarter. The KD Tigers have arrived for their next game. It's going to be a big day here in Arlington. 
All right, with Coach Joseph of Katie. And Coach, well, I tell you what, a, a state championship this year would be eighth for the school. What would that mean for Tiger Nation? That's a pretty neat deal. Yeah, it's a neat deal just to get back to this thing and get back to the state championship game. You know, people don't realize how hard they are to get to and things. And we've been very fortunate very blessed to, to get back here. And, and now it's time to see if we can finish this thing off. It's a lot of times you have no idea really about your opponent. You guys have a great idea, obviously. What do you got to do to make it a Katie sandwich of championships? What a win this year. Uh, we're going to have to play extremely well. They're playing really, really great football right now, especially offensively. You know, they may be the best offensive football team that I've seen in, in you know, in 38 years of coaching and things. And uh, they're very, very talented. Our kids are going to have to play extremely well. they got to play extremely hard. And, and uh, m most of all, they're going to have to sit there and, and be very intelligent about what they're doing. Awesome. C congratulations so far and good luck today. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Neil Beasley, longtime head coach Gary Joseph. And yeah, he was right. They know a lot about each other. There's no secrets coming into this football game today with these guys. No secrets. It's intense. The rivalry is real. And that will be a, a, a tremendous game after this one. Round three between Katie and Cedar Hill. Right now, business here in the second half for Temple and Alito. Temple needing to get some momentum going. Right, Heist with the stop there on the pass completion from Chad President to. See struck on that right sideline. Yeah, see struck, junior wide receiver. Running room there for President. Big running room on that right side, crossing midfield. And that's going to be another first down for the Wildcats. So this is what they like to see some progress here. This is what they like to see. They like to have Chad President where he's running the ball, moving it forward with his arm, just getting positive yards. They weren't getting consistent positive yards early in this game. They're trying to settle and get back into that game. Brings that hole to open. Turns into a 12-yard gain for Chad President. First and 10. Over the middle. Looking for Seastruck. Kind of had him twisting around. Coverage on the play. Patrick Peake for Alita. And Temple taking a little more time off the clock in between plays in that first half. They're running at a rate of 16 seconds per play to Alito's 26. But they've slowed down in the second half and they're not rushing the plays. Marcus Hatcher. Picks up a couple of yards. Larry Brown will make the stop for Alito. Larry Brown's having a good ball game today. Already has a pick six on this day. Third down and seven now for the Wildcats. Pass is caught. Catch made by Jordan Lee, his first catch of the day. Jordan Lee felt the referee blew that was a little too early. He wanted to try to pick up those extra yards after the catch. But after the forward momentum stopped, the referee blew the whistle. And it was a little quick whistle. Enough for the first down. Preston tries to tiptoe down that left sideline before he's out of bounds. Chad President, 917 yards rushing coming in on the year, over 2,400 yards through the air. Combined 33 touchdowns for the Temple Senior. We talk about those positive yards. You're used to seeing these big plays from these explosive offenses, Temple and Alito. Temple, they have to understand every yard that they get on this drive is something positive as they get closer to hitting pay dirt. Being down 35-17, they definitely need to leave this series with six on the board. Third down and two to Tyler Hannon. You know, that's left sideline, knocked out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. Looks like around the nine-yard line. That's an 18-yard pickup on the pass play from President Tahana. Temple, down 18, desperately trying to find the end zone here. Hand off. Touchdown, Temple. Marcus Hatcher.
the execution is what made that play happen. President kept the ball for a long time with his hands on the ball. Excuse me, he kept his hands on the ball as he put it in the arms of Marcus Hatcher. And at the last second, he decided to let Marcus take that ball while some of the defenders were still defending Chad President as the runner. Those option plays are very tough when you do it well timed. Gold mark. Extra point. Pulled it a little bit, but it goes through for the extra point. And Temple is back on the board again here, late third quarter. Touchdown run for Marcus Hatcher. 18-point deficit. Now down to 11. Very much alive here in the second half. Defense needs to continue to make stops here to keep these guys in it. Lito, of course, uh, has been here often. They won the title a year ago. Let's take a look at some of those highlights. 4A Division II state title game last year, taking on the Cubs from Brenham High School. The Bearcats, no strangers to the state title games, making their way to Arlington. Quarterback Luke Bishop, one of the several stars in this one for Alito, found speedy receiver Ryan Newsom. There he is, 28-yard pitch and catch. Put him up 17-3 at the half. And Bishop getting his body into the throw down to Taco Anderson, who does the rest. Anderson takes a hard hit at the goal line. Two of his receiving touchdowns on the day. Bishop's loving it. He and the Tigers, or he and the Bearcats, uh, flexing their muscles. Made a statement against Brenham, winning 38-10 to to claim the 4A Division II state title for the Alito Bearcats. And they won four of the last five for five out of six here. Another onside kick. Recover to see if he's in bounds. Did he get a foot in? He did. Temple gets the football back. <laughs> what a gutsy call by the coach, and they played that perfectly. That's Latouche, I believe, who... Jumped up and grabbed that football. Got his foot down. You could have not have kicked that better. Here it is again. Cole Martin. Short kick. Right there to Latouche. Oh. No replay in high school football. Yeah. Well, that foot was out of bounds. They get a break, though. Hatcher. Crosses the 40, still on his feet, inside the 30, Hatcher, 10, knocked out of bounds. Big run for Marcus Hatcher. And that's what happens when you have plays like that, when your defense comes to play, you feel the momentum shift, you get the all-size kick, and it just uplifts everybody, and you're starting to see it on the offensive side of the ball with the offensive lineman with that third, fourth effort on that run by Hatcher. It's a 41-yard run from Marcus Hatcher. They got it on the five. First and goal to go now for the Temple Wildcats. There's Hatcher again. Nobody's going to touch him. Another touchdown for the Wildcats. That didn't take long, did it? Did not take long, and you never count out any of these Texas high school football teams, no matter the score. One after from Cole Martin's up and good. How about this? One's an 18-point lead for Alito. Now down to four. How about the day for Marcus Hatcher so far? And he's got a lot of football left today. A lot of football throughout the season. He was sharing carries with Jeff Carr, who had over 2,000 yards. But Marcus Hatcher coming into the game with over 1,700 is showing you why he had over 1,700 yards. Here's how it started. The outside kick came down. Latouche, again, portion of that foot was out of bounds. But they kept the football, and then it sets up. They do not waste any time just feeding the man in the backfield, Marcus Hatcher. Yeah, the excitement just carries over the momentum from the special teams play. Then you take that over to the offensive side of the ball, and now you have yourself a ball game. Look at those holes. Uh, you cannot credit the offensive line enough. When you run 10, 15 yards and you go untouched, you have to credit those guys up front. 
Two touchdowns in a span of 17 seconds for Temple to get back into this game. It was not looking good midway through the quarter, but things have changed now. Toledo in command, but not anymore. Four-point lead for the Bearcats. The golf team is fired up for Temple. And so are the Wildcat fans. Short kick. That catch is made around the 37, 38 yard line. Lito trying to turn the momentum here at AT&T Stadium. They'll get the football back. A minute 39 to go in the third quarter. Those of you in the Dallas market, Spurs and the Mavericks will air on KTXA 21 at 7:30. Ray John Rondo and his Maverick debut 7:30 tonight. It's going to be a nice matchup. It's a good trade right there. Wasn't it? it is a very good trade. All right, here we go. We'll start on the 38 yard line for Alito. Bishop crosses the 40, 45, 50, out of bounds in a Wildcat territory at the 49 yard line. And that's what you do if you're a leader. When the momentum feels to be shifting up tempo, you put the ball in the hands of your playmaker and you allow him to take that momentum away with a big run out of the quarterback, Luke Bishop. It's a 13 yard pickup right off the bat here from Luke Bishop. That'll silence the Temple sidelines, sit the crowd a little bit. Just what you expect in a UIL State Championship football game. Tim Bishop, uh, he's met by Quick Smith. Quick Smith's everywhere on this field yeah, for he, Temple today. He's everywhere with his run support. The defensive end was sealed off, but Quick Smith replaced the defensive end and did not allow Luke Bishop to get upfield. Second down and seven now for Alito. Coach Mike Spradlin. Fourth year on the job. As the Wildcats back in the big game. They have not won a title since 92. They won one also in 1979. There's Anders. Big room up the middle. He's going to be finally brought down around the 32. Again, it's Quentin Smith with the stop, but a big gap on that right side. 13 yards for Anders. This is what you expect from Alito. They've been here time and time again. They're not going to allow a series for a Temple to really get them overly excited or overly down on themselves. They know what they need to do. They've been doing it not just all game, but all season. They make holes for their running backs, and Luke Bishop, he picks it up either with his arm or his feet. So they're not going to get too down on themselves right now. They're going to fight their way out of this moment. Back to the line of scrimmage, basically, and he was pushed back. Eduardo Escobedo helping make the stop. Also, Ty McCorkle. Two or three Wildcats right there to greet him. Just feel the energy on the Temple side. The fans are starting to just go through the motions. Now they actually feel like they have a chance to win this game. But easier said than done when the, the job at hand is to stop the Bishop and the rest of that Amito offense. Bishop handing to Anders again. Ty McCorkle says you're not going anywhere. What a play by McCorkle. What a play by McCorkle, but it starts with one of the Hernandez twins. He moves the line of scrimmage. The defensive line up front, they were very effective in getting that line of scrimmage pushed back about two or three yards, which made it easy for McCorkle to make that play. Three quarters in the books. We're going to the fourth here in Arlington, 35-31. For you, Santa. Quarter here in Arlington, 35 31 Alito. Let's take a look at the sequence for that third quarter. A much needed bounce back for Temple, the Wildcats. 
And they give it to Hatcher. He did some damage there. Yeah, he did some damage. The guys up front did damage, allowing the running back not to get touched. And the offside kick recovered by Latouche. And that set up a couple plays later. Hatcher again untouched. All of a sudden, down 18. Very much alive now as we start the fourth, 35 31. Alito leading at Temple. First half, you see the numbers 515 total yards combined, 52 points. Temple with that 17 second stretch to get back into this football game. And here we go to start the fourth. Bishop chased down the pocket. Smith tries to get him. Instead, McCorkle will bring him down around the 30 yard line. Another big play by McCorkle with the run support. You see that these guys were listening to their defensive coaches because one thing we saw during the first half is when plays would break down, Luke Bishop would be running for days, what it seemed to be days, but now these guys are pulling off their receivers and they're giving you that run support, and Luke Bishop has not been able to pick up those first downs as easily, as, easily as he did in that first half. That was a third down stop, so now it'd be a fourth and six. Alito. Out of field goal range, so they're going to go for it. First down marker around the 23-yard line. There's Bishop finds Anders inside the 20 on his feet. Anders in for the touchdown. That was a breakdown on communication, breakdown on coverage. Anders, one of your best players, one of the best players on the field should not be that wide open. There had to be a mental breakdown, and it looked like Dennis Jordan was the closest guy to him. I don't know if that was his man, if he was supposed to be marking just Anders, but there was definitely a breakdown in the defense on that play. 29-yard touchdown, point after. Ben Rogers up, and it is good, so. The big rally by Temple. How does Alito answer? With a touchdown of her own to open this fourth quarter here in Arlington. It's back up now to an 11 point cushion for the Bearcats. And watch on this replay when I talk about a guy like Jess Hander shouldn't be that wide open. The play breaks down. You don't know if they're losing a defensive back due to the blitz, but there is someone who's supposed to be checking Jess Anders at the entire time. Luke Bishop, a touchdown pass on his resume. That young man's been busy today, senior Jess Anders. Future road runner. He's taking his talents to San Antonio to play for UTSA next season. We battle a medical condition there in the summertime. It's a throat infection of a serious kind. And they, it, it, it was something they were concerned about. He lost 25 pounds in a relatively short period of time, as you know. And he's battled back. They weren't really sure what they would give from Jess Anders this year. Then he got deeped up a little bit. Missed a few games, but you know what? He's come back strong, and here it is. State Championship Saturday's on the field for Alito. And you see why it was so important to get him healthy and back on the field. And out by Temple, crossing 25 on that kickoff. That's Jeff Carr bringing it up. Well, we saw the Alito highlights just a little while ago. And you know what a run they have had state championship run over the years indeed Tim Buchanan is the longtime head coach stepped aside in the summer you know what he's in the building here's an update right now down on the field guys you can take the coach out of the game can't take the game out of the coach I saw that jacket come off pretty quickly there in the first half what are you taking from this one uh, it just got got a little warm in the first half <laughs> I feel you, Coach. What'd you take from that first half play? You know, I asked Coach Wood at the break, what's going well? What maybe needs some adjustment to top these guys? Well, we're, we're, we were running the ball well in the first half, and then, you know, Coach Brown's a good football coach. He made some adjustments. Now we're throwing it well in the second half. From what I understand, he is still the interim head coach, has not formally been named the head coach. Still taking the reins from you, didn't skip a beat this year. How do you explain what Steve's done this year? Oh, Steve's, Steve's been a good football coach since I've known him. Uh, there's a reason why we hired him back in 2002, but Steve's a great football coach, uh, and what he's done this year, not only with the football team, but with the fans, the media, everything, has just been superb. I know he's taken a lot from you. Your message to him when handing over those reins? Well, it's just be himself. Do what he needs to do to win. And he's doing okay right now. We appreciate it, Coach. We'll let you get back to those sidelines, guys. All right, Aaron, appreciate that. Always good to see Coach Buchanan. What a, tell you what, 
what else can you say on his coaching resume? We got an injury down the field right now, but what a job. And Steve Wood, his longtime assistant, has done a fantastic job as well. So it's taking over. Let's go back now to a 2010 as we do some more flashbacks. These are always fun to watch some of these great athletes that have played in the state title game. Four in Division Two, Indy. This is Alito and Lamarck. Bearcats ran over the competition that year. Big reason why is this young man, Jonathan Gray. Nobody thought that the Sugarland Express Kid Hall would have to be seriously worried about his single season touchdown record of 57, but Gray entered with 51 on the year. He couldn't be stopped that day. By the end of the first half, he already had four, four times, uh, three of them from at least 40 yards out. Added two more rushing touchdowns in the third to tie home mark, and the 54-yard spread to six in the fourth quarter set the new record ran for 325 eight touchdowns giving him 59 for the season as alito blew by lamarck 69 to 34 so one of the great memories that's marcus hatcher by the way being helped off he's had a big day let's hope that's not serious because they need him out there no they need him out there you saw the stats over 140 yards and jeff carr has been very quiet still trying to determine if He's been injured. Jeff Carr coming into the game as the leading rusher, but we've seen more Marcus Hatcher in the second half. Looking for Tempest for the 38. Bad president. Now close to the 45-yard line, brought down by Ryan Ice. Picks up seven on that play, so now second down and three for the Wildcats. Running room there for Temple. With Hatcher out, handoff there goes to Devontae Neely. He's a junior. He got three touchdowns on the air, 50 carries. That's a 16 yard pickup, so he steps right in. Nice run by Neely. Neely again. Ross 35. Derek Duell with the stop for Alito. You got a fresh set of legs in there. Hatcher had been really working it hard along with Jeff Carr. Monte Neely, pretty productive, rushing for almost 400 yards this season for Temple. And, and Jeff Carr, we've not seen a lot of Jeff Carr, which makes you wonder if it's due to injury. Again, the 2,000 yard rusher has not played much in the second half. Now there's Hatcher back out there. He's looking pretty good there near the 10 yard line. He bounced back he, from that injury. Yeah, he did. Patrick Peak knocking him out of bounds. Let's go down to Brooke Bentley with an update on Jeff Carr. There is not good news on Jeff Carr. He injured his right ankle. He's sitting on the bench with his shoe off. I asked him if he will return to the game. He shook his head no, so it looks doubtful that he will be back in for Temple. Guys, back to you. Yeah, that's a big blow for the Wildcats. Again, you're talking about a 2,000 yard rusher. He's kind of the bell cow back there in that backfield for the Wildcats. Yeah, uh, that's tough for that young man to have the type of season that he had this entire year and not be able to finish the most important game of his career. That was a 26 yard run there by Hatcher. Second and goal to go now. They got it down to the six yard line. Trying to chip away at this deficit. Down 11 now. A lot of time left here in the fourth. President will try to keep it inside the five. Lead over. Touchdown, Chad President. What a run. What a run. Great effort trying to get that ball across the line. He successfully does it with that last jump at the end of that play. Much needed for Temple with 8.15 to go here in the fourth quarter. He just jumped up like Superman there at the end, didn't he? Yes, he did, and he's checking out that great play on the big screen here at the AT&T Stadium. <laughs> you can't blame him. Point after up and good. What a game here. 42-38 now, Alito. After Chad President right there leads in for the touchdown. We're coming right back to Arlington.
AIL Texas State Football Championship is brought to you by State Farm. Visit texas.statefarm.com to get to a better state. By DQ, the stop sign of Texas for the best treats, eats, and drinks in Texas. Stop at DQ. And by Ford, the Dream Big Sales event is going on now at your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Back live AT&T Stadium. You see the crowd. This is only game one of three, Indy. How about a 40,281 attendance to kick this Super Saturday off? Not too bad, huh? Yeah, not too bad at all. High school football in Texas really matters. And it's not just the communities. It's not just the towns that are playing. There are a lot of people who want to see who the best team's going to be. And even if they don't have a kid, if they're not from the, uh, the town, they're coming to these games. Absolutely. They're in for a treat. What an experience here. Three levels already filling up here. I think it's only going to get bigger and bigger. A lot of these fans will stick around for the next game and, of course, the nightcap tonight. Newsom will bring it out for Alito. Back pedals to the 10. Trying to find some space. He's not there. Nice special teams from Temple. Tackle made by Rogers Franklin. A sophomore linebacker stepping up and making that big stop on Newsom. And that's the type of momentum and type of hitting that you're going to have to see from the Temple Wildcat defense if they're going to try to stop Alito another time to get the ball back in the hands of their offense. Down four points. This is a big, big drive for Alito coming up. 8.06 to go, fourth quarter. First of three games today. We've got Katie Cedar Hill is next, followed by the nightcap between Allen on a 42-game winning streak, taking on the Mustangs from Cy Ranch. Total yards today. Continue to pile up for both teams. There's Jess Anders. Initial contact to the tackle made by Quentin Smith. He already had a dozen tackles a little while ago. That number keeps improving for him. The it? number keeps improving, and a big part of that is because those guys up front, especially in the middle with the Hernandez twins, or they call them Hernandez and Hernandez, the law firm, they are <laughs> holding their spot, and they're allowing their defensive backs and linebackers to roam around and make plays. One yard on that pickup, second down and nine. Again, key series for this Temple defense. Timeout has been called. Alito. Alito's going to call that. First Steve Wood and company will take, talk it over here. And in that defensive huddle, they're telling each other for Temple, hey, we're down for it. Let's get the ball back. Let's get the ball back in the hands of President and the rest of those guys so we can actually have a chance to pull this out. They're getting more confident with each series. In that first half, it felt like Temple just didn't have an answer for anything Alito was doing. But we've already seen the punter a couple of times. This second half, and Temple starting to feel that they can't shut down Alito. The score doesn't show it, but hey, it's all about what series that you're at currently. And they've had some success in the second half. This Temple defense during the season itself gave up 22 points a game. In the playoffs, a little more than that, up to 26. Right. Trying to slow these guys down here in this fourth quarter. Potent attack from Alito. Hey, the chance of a lifetime. Yesterday and tomorrow sit side by side. The Daytona 500, February 22nd. Tickets on sale now. Daytona500.com. All right, second down and nine now for Alito. Bishop looking for Newsom. How often does that happen? Not very often. Not very often. Dropping the football. Right, not very often at all. And Ryan Newsom, even though he's very experienced, that was an amateur mistake. You do not worry about getting the yards after the catch until you secure the ball. But right then he was thinking about the big play that he was about to make. Third down now. And nine, Temple, Steve Wood. Tries to stay calm on that Bearcat sideline. Temple fans are on their feet, making some noise here. They want to stop. Bishop, that pass is going to be caught by Newsom. He bounces back, and he's met by three or four Wildcat players. Ty McCorkle is there, so is Quint Cole, number 15. 
Green Cole played this exactly the way his defensive coach wanted to play. You're not going to take away every reception. You're going to allow them to catch it. You stay in front of them and you make the sure tackle. The big play comes when you make the first defender miss, but he was able to wrap up Ryan Newsom and didn't let him get the extra yards after the catch. Well played. Run it away now. Temple's going to get some pretty good field position. Eric Yule, the punt. That'll hit. And that will settle just inside the 30 yard line. That's a 47 yard punt by Alito, but here come the Wildcats. Let's check in right now with Brooke Bentley along the Temple sideline. Randy, it is electric on the Temple sidelines. The fans are on their feet cheering. The players jumping up and down and the coaches. They've been telling the players, listen, we've got them on the ropes. We're playing our tempo. We can do this. Everyone pumped up over here. Guys, back to you. All right, Brooke, thank you. Yeah, you can see, you can feel the enthusiasm, the yes. intensity, Brooke, because we're in the final minutes here in the fourth quarter, six and a half to go. Wildcats trying to keep their momentum behind this young man, Chad President. He's got running room again. Carrying two Bearcats with him inside. Approaching midfield, a little shy of that. That's a 12-yard pickup for Chad President. And a flag looks like it could be a late hit out of bounds. You know, they're trying to protect these quarterbacks, so we'll see what the ref Absolutely. says. Absolutely. Houston officiating chapter here today. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds on the defense, number six. 15-yard penalty at the end of the run. On that first down. A late hit penalty against Patrick Peake. He doesn't like it, but here's a look at it again. Out of bounds, and then Peake has him wrapped up. And then the late shove, and that's what brought the flag on. Patrick fighting his way down near the 40. Caleb Primera, James Williams on the tackles for Alito. No quit in Temple. When they got down, they just fought their way through it. And you're just starting to see both sides of the ball work off each other. Click hole with the big defensive stop before that. And now the Temple offense plays. Now Chad President pass intended for Tyler Hannon. That was a dangerous pass because you had some guys for that back end and for Alito coming up. Could have very easily been picked off. Instead, falls incomplete. Clock stops. 5.58 to go. It's a third and seven facing the Wildcats now. President out to Hannon. He's looking downfield. And he's got it. What a catch. That's Jordan Lee hauling it in for 40 yards out. Kind of juggled it there for a minute. He held out for the touchdown. What a play by the Wildcats. And that play embodies Temple right now. They just don't give up on plays. They don't give up on the game. Great call by the offensive coordinator on that. But Lee never giving up on that pass play and concentrating the entire time. Gutsy, gutsy call. And that play right there really shows what Temple's all about. Now they're showing the replay on the big screen here. Fans are going crazy after that catch. Point after is up and good. And Temple has regained the lead here in a shootout. 5A Division I state championship. 40,000 plus here today. In for a treat. Take a look at it here again, Indy. And watch the concentration. Never gives up on the play. Nice call. Big hit there on Hannon. He delivered the football, though. Yeah, excellent concentration by Lee. I'll tell you what, with the effort, with the coaching, with these great kids out here, it, this is just a fun game to watch and be a part of. There's Tyler Hannon. Look at that. What a reaction. The senior. <laughs> They're all talking about it now on the sidelines. That kind of play, you know, you just got to have a little bit of time to get that football off. He took that big hit, but it was about a split second too late. 
It's going to be important for Temple's defense to stay in this, not to be celebrating, but to continue to understand what the assignment's going to be. When you look at both offenses, especially Alito's, they can score from anywhere at any given time. So it's good for the fans to get all excited. It's even good for the offensive players for Temple to celebrate that play. But right now, the defenders for Temple, they need to understand their assignment and start thinking about Luke Bishop and the rest of that offense that's about to take the field for Alito. Now, it's not very often over the last several years that Alito found themselves trailing in the fourth quarter, but that is the case right now. Down three, Toby Gray and Ryan Newsom back for Alito. That one will go through the end zone. Alito will get the football back. What a play. What a call by Mike Spradlin. And Temple on that. Well, Bearcats shut out in the third quarter by this Temple defense. You see how the scoring breakdown so far throughout this football game. It was a quick start today in the first quarter for Temple. And then Alito found its rhythm and kind of took control. Led big at halftime. And in that 17 second stretch, all of a sudden, momentum shift. Temple believing again they could not only get back in this football game, but win this game. And right now, three point lead, 5.50 to go. Luke Bishop. Pass is caught by Newsom. Coverage on the play from Markel Davis Potts to knock him out of bounds. Luke Bishop just again showing why he's one of the best in the state of Texas at the quarterback position. So accurate when he's on the run. Good job by the Temple defense putting pressure, chasing him out of the pocket. But when you're that accurate on the move, you pick up those first downs because you get a five yard gain when you're thinking of a sack or thinking of throwing the ball. Away. Second down at five from the 30. Anders. Wow, he could have had a lot more if he wasn't tripped up there by, I think Quentin Smith may be credited for that tackle, because if he missed that tackle, Jess Anders had some running room. He'll still be running. <laughs> we'll be hearing the crowd yelling and screaming, but enough to get the first down and keep this drive alive for Alito. First and 10, they push it out now to the 38-yard line. Luke Bishop. Lead the rally for Alito. Space up the middle. He'll slip and fall. He's shy of the 45 yard line. Every time he carries the ball this season, at least, again, he had just about 900 rushing yards, 7.3 average per run for Luke Bishop this season. Yards 518 already. 370. Bishop again. He's met at the 45. Lunges forward to the 46. Gilberto Hernandez with the tackle. And he and his brother, twin brother Sergio, on that D line for the Wildcats. Both are listed at 240. Gilberto. Listed at 6'1", Sergio six foot, so I guess he's got bragging right. Yeah, he has a bragging right. <laughs> Third and two now for Alito. Five of ten on third down conversion so far today. They need to get to the 48. Luke Bishop, you know, plenty for the first down and then some. That's a demoralizing play for the Temple Wildcat defense, and I say that because they loaded their defensive line to the left side, the left of the defense, and that's exactly where Alito still attacked, and they were able to pick up the positive yards and get the first down. They knew what was coming, the Temple defense, but they couldn't stop it. Nine yards on that carry by Luke Bishop. The 45-yard line now, Temple. He set it out, three and a half in county, fourth quarter. There's Anders. Leaps around the fourth. <laughs> he was about to be hit. He jumped about three feet in the air, it looked like. Just there. a fun athlete to watch. <laughs> Jumping over guys, running through guys. I mean, look at the athleticism on that play. That's getting everybody at UTSA happy, knowing that he's going to be <laughs> playing for the Roadrunners next year. Wow. 
second down at three. Seven yards on the carry from Andrews. Isn't that a good afternoon of football here. Jess Andrews. Just to the left there of Luke Bishop. Get the handoff again. Big yard is at the middle across the 30. 25. Hit at the 22. Clint Cole in on the stop. Another first down for Alito. They're just chipping away here between Anders and between Bishop. That's 16 more for Jess Anders. Picking up those tough yards, 21 rushes, 92 yards, two touchdowns. Well, for a guy with his stature, you expect it always to be wide runs. He's running in between the guards and picking up nice, tough yards, delivering blows to defenders when they try to bring him down. First and 10 for the 23. Bishop. That play continues to work. Positive yards again for Bishop. Derek Grayer with the tackle for Temple. Eat up a lot of clock time here, too. 227 and counting. Mm -hmm. Won it all in 2013. Back again. We're not here in 2012, but of course they had that run 2009, 2010, 2011. Going to keep the tradition going. There are the numbers on Bishop. Second down at four. Get the handoff. Wrapped up. Anders tackled around the 17. Ty McCorkle. It'll be a third down and three now coming up for the Bearcats. Eduardo Escobedo also helping in on that tackle. Temple. Temple's going to take a timeout and talk this over now. They've got a big play coming up here, Indy. Third and four. They're on the 16-yard line. So many options right now. It's tough for the Temple defensive coaches to know who to go after, who to focus on, whether it's Ryan Newsom, Jess Andrews, Luke Bishop. So many playmakers for this Alito offense. You can't just focus in on one. The emphasis in the defensive huddle is staying in your gap, playing assignment football, and not focusing on one player because then it's just going to go to another one. You can even see a, a short, safe pass, safe route to Toby Gray, the big physical tight end. Fifty one to go again this next game going to be Katie at Cedar Hill Craig way Shea Walker will have that call also the nightcap tonight Allen and Cy Ranch 6 8 division one this is just the start of a busy Saturday and over 40,000 attendants here for this one five division one state championship so third and three facing the Bearcats First down marker down by the 12 yard line. Closer to four yards is what they need. Bishop met by McCorkle. This is going to be a little bit short here. The hole opened up, but it closed up just as quickly as it opened. Try to fight for the first down. And it doesn't even appear that they're going to bring the sticks out. Yeah, they're going to have a fourth down coming up. Steve Woods called a timeout for Alito. We're talking over here with a minute 30 to go. Fourth down play for Alito. They make the stop. No secret. You know what's on the line. They make the stop. Temple gets it back. They run out the clock here. The question is, is kicking the field goal even a thought for a leader? Yeah. To tie they're, the game up. Yeah, they're talking about it right now. The Temple coaches are it's telling their defense, watch the fake if they do bring the field goal team out. And if not, they're going over their assignments again to try to stop Alito as they try to pick up one yard if they do not go for the field. What's the thought process here? You're down three. You feel like you can just get that yard. They've had success yes. in the drive, especially from Luke Bishop. He's got a lot of space for the most part right up the middle. They got a decision here. They're going to go 
for it. At least line up as if they're going to go for it here. Fourth and one. This is where you tell the defense as well, watch the hard snaps and try to get guys to jump off sides and pick up a cheap first down. And off, Anders. Second Over to the 10. Yeah, great second effort. First down for the Bearcats. Contact, big hit right there from Logan. He shook that off. They couldn't bring him down, and a first down now for Alita. I don't think just Andrews realizes he's 160 pounds. He runs that ball <laughs> like he's 260 pounds. Fearless. That Wildcat is going to be Newsom around the right side. He's going to be hit short of the five. Down by the six seven yard line. Davis Potts and a few other Wildcats there to greet him as we get 48 seconds left in this ball game. Another timeout. What else could you ask for? A state championship game coming down to the last 48 seconds. Evenly matched teams, explosive offenses, and defenses stepping up when they had to. Only appropriate that it comes down to that. What a game this has been. A good quick start for Temple on this one. Alito responded in, in command at halftime. And for part of the third quarter, actually, until that 17-second stretch where they scored twice, and pulled it within four. It's been neck and neck since then. Now a three-point lead for the Wildcats. This drive for Alito indeed began with 550 left on the clock. So this is the 13th play coming up on this drive for Alito. Knocking on the door, down three, trying to find the end zone here. For this Wildcat defense, they've been giving up points, 27 points during the playoffs, and 22, as you mentioned, during the regular season. This will be the biggest stop of the season if they can stop them over the next few plays and keep a lead over going for Well, it'll be interesting now. You got 48 seconds left. Of course, they want to get that end zone to reclaim the lead, but you still got the field goal potential here to tie the game. We had the overtime game last night. First OT game in five years here at the UIL State Championships. Bishop, a lot of these Alito Bearcats, they've been in situations. Not necessarily this tight down the stretch, but with the pressure on of maintaining the high level of play this program has had over the years. They know what it takes. Second and goal now. From the six yard line for Alito. Bishop. Luke Bishop in for the touchdown from six yards out. Similar as he does as a passer, he let the play develop. He waited for Jess Andrews to make the play, make the block, and that's when he followed his tail back into the end zone. Nice block by Jess Andrews and a nice patient run by Luke Fisher. Forty-seven seconds left. Luke Bishop has put the Bearcats back on top. Point after coming up. It's up and it's good. So a four-point lead now for Alito. Take a look at it again. Good play ball here. Watch number 23. He doesn't just run the ball. He also makes the block that allows Luke Bishop to get into that end zone. Yeah, when you look at game film, any coach can say, hey, that's a great run by Luke Bishop. Right. But kudos to Mr. Anders for making that hit. on the sidelines for Alito. Not over yet, though. The way these two teams have moved it up and down the field, it can happen quickly. Like you mentioned, Temple, one timeout, 47 seconds left. Anything can happen. Oh, 
Bishop magic continues with Alito's brother who we interviewed earlier in the football game. Matt Bishop left the state titles all the family. matter of fact right next to him right there talking to him all the family there big part of Alito football history the Bishop thing. Everything's important now it's important for Alito's kickoff team to get down stay in their lanes and not allow a big return and it's important for the Wildcat return team to get on their blocks and try to pick up and eat up a lot of yards on this return. Look off for Temple or for Alito to Temple. Monte Ely will bring it out. And he is best so here we go 41 seconds left. Temple with the football will get their shot. Temple's got one timeout to work with here, Indy. See what he can do with the football. The quarterback, Chad Preston, give him the space. He can hurt you. He got some right there. Lito closes the gap as he crosses the 30-yard line. Tackle made by James Williams and Garrett Gould. Clock continues to roll now. 46 and count. President out to see strong. They're gonna call it. They call the timeout there. Yeah, those two plays took a lot off the clock for Temple. I think he wanted to try to get out of bounds. He didn't, so they're forced to use that timeout now with 18 seconds left. Larry Brown with the stop for Alita. They used that timeout. They had one left. And now they got to draw something up special here. Got 18 seconds to work with down four. Thought for Temple try to pick up some more yards, then throw that Hail Mary. They're a little too far to go for a Hail Mary. They still have 18 uh, seconds to try to pick up and eat up some of that turf because they have a lot of space that they need before they could even throw a Hail Mary. So right now they're going to try to pick up 9, 10 yards, either get out of bounds or spike the ball the next play before they take a shot at the end zone. Or you may see one of those receiver catch and hitch type plays. President downfield pass intended for Tyler Hannon. Eric Yule there, along with Isaiah Mallory for Alita. Clock stops with 14 seconds left. Second down now for Temple. Is caught out of bounds quickly. That's Aaron Freeman. Covers by Mallory. That knocked off another four seconds. We're down to 10 now. It's a 15 yard pickup as they get into midfield. President again out of bounds. Clock stops with six seconds left to Freeman. Now you have a realistic shot at the end zone. Another 15 yards back to back plays now. And this is where you take your shot. You only have six seconds. You don't want to risk getting that clock down to zero with another quick 10, 15 yarder. I believe they're going to go for the end zone on this play. Well, the last two plays have only eaten up four seconds each, but President will loft it downfield. Pass is intercepted in the end zone. Picked off. By Bishop, I believe, had the honors. <laughs> they had it back here, the hands team there in the end zone. And that'll end it here at AT&T Stadium. Only fitting that he ends the game with an interception as first until he's been on the offensive side of the ball. Great effort by the Temple Wildcats. Never given up on the game. 
Well, the emotions there. Mike Spradlin and Chad President. That's part of it. You get here. You want us so badly. Yeah. You're so close. And then to walk away with feels empty handed. It's just tough to swallow. Even a guy like Chad President who has a great future going to Baylor. This loss bringing him to tears. Good coverage there from Alito. Patrick Peak on there with pass was intended for Chris Minter. Jonathan Durham also back there with Peak along with Luke Bishop. And there's the reaction from Steve Wood. First year as head coach at Alito. Longtime assistant. You see the reaction from the Temple players. There's Minter in the end zone. He's, he's one of the seniors on this Temple Wildcat team. Both hands, both the teams shaking hands. Let's go down to the field, check in with Aaron Hardigan. She's standing by with the head coach of Alito, Steve Wood. Back to back state champs. Alito sixth, your first as a head football coach. What's it mean? Well, it means everything. I'm so proud of these kids. I'm just so proud of these coaches and why they fought. Those guys are good. Those guys are good over there, you know, and we're very blessed, very lucky. I'm kind of lost for words. Backs against the wall in final minutes. You're trailing. Take me through that final go-ahead drive. What was the game plan there? Well, we wanted to run clock. We didn't want to give them very much time. We, we were trying to milk as much of it as we could, but in the end, you still have to score. And when you got to go get something, when the chips are down, you want Luke Bishop, Luke Bishop running the ball for you. I do know that. Those Bishop boys have been part of five of these six state titles. Matthew, of course, with that three-peat. What are those boys, what have they done for not only this program, but the town of Alito? Well, they're just great competitors. You know, their dad's our old line coach. Their mother's a better competitor than him. And there's a young one that's going to be great also. I mean, they've meant everything to me and Alito. I'll tell you that right now. When you took the reins from Tim early on in this year, you had six returners, just six, Coach, one on defense. A lot of folks thought it'd be a rebuilding year, and here you are today, back-to-back -to -back state champs. How'd you do it? We have good kids now. We weren't without. I, it, it wasn't like we were trying to fix something that was broke. Now, state championship, I, I don't know that I had that on my mind. And Well, you always have it in the back of your mind, but we're, we're blessed. We've got great kids, great facilities, unbelievable fans. I mean, it's it's a unique place right now to be. I'm lucky to be in Alito. I know that. Hey, how cool it was to see Tim Buck there fired up jumping for you on <laughs> the sideline. It's pretty exciting. He's my biggest fan. I, I mean that, and I could not have done anything or we couldn't have without him. He has been a huge help. He's meant everything to this program. He's prouder than ever with you, Coach. Congratulations. Go celebrate with your boys, guys. All right. Thank you very much, Eric. Congratulations. Steve Wood in the what a what, I mean, first year taking over for the legend, Tim Buchanan. And you still run the table, you win it all. Hey, and you, when you uh, replace a guy like Buchanan, you almost have to win a state championship. So there's so much pressure on him. And you can see and hear and feel the relief in his voice during that post-game interview. Take a look at our DQ big play of the game. Take a look at this final stretch here, this last drive. Yet, well, they had the conversion they had to take care of first before they found the end zone. And there is fourth and one, the conversion there. And then the touchdown run coming up after the block by Andrews open it up for Luke Bishop. And then for Luke Bishop to have the game he had and end it with the interception on that Hail Mary play. It was only fair. Now trophy presentations coming up on the medals. A lot of players getting those right now on the Temple sideline as well. Along with Alito. Well, it's tough when you come up empty. You get to this big game indeed. Lead, uh, Temple coming in 13 and one now 13 and two and you're facing a powerhouse program like Alito it's a it's a veteran program that's been here these kids are growing up winning getting used to winning state championships these young players that come in they know what to expect and with Temple they have not been to this game since 1992 this is exciting for the town they really felt it they really wanted it and right now you cannot tell them how great of a season they had they don't want to hear it because they wanted to bring home that trophy but they have nothing to hang their heads on. As Luke Bishop right there getting a uh, handshake and hug from his former head coach Tim Buchanan. There's his brother Matt. 
Fourth player of the game, Luke Bishop. There he is with the medal wrapped around his neck. As the fans wait for the trophy presentation. There are the numbers now for uh, Luke Bishop, fourth player of the game. 122 yards passing, 169 on the ground. That's a, that's a good day at the office, isn't it? That's a good day. Second year in a row. Right now, Aaron Hardigan is standing by with Luke Bishop. Luke mentioned he's exhausted here. Hang us with us through this interview here, buddy. Unbelievable. You're back against the wall there on that final drive. Take me through what was going on in your head, buddy. You know, we've been in this position before. Uh, first game of the season. We had a drive with a minute left in the game, and we did. I had faith in the guys. The new Coach Jones would have a good play call. Uh, you know, it was just a... Uh, no line did a great job. Proud of everybody. Could have asked for a better way to end it right there. When Coach Wood took over this season, you only had six returners. You wondered if it'd be a rebuilding year, and here you are today, Luke. How do you explain what you guys did this year? Well, in Alito, I like to think there is a, there's never a rebuilding year. Every year, people leave, and we got younger guys that fill their spot that are just as good, you know? Uh, that's, a, that's why we've been able to keep a streak going, you know? Um, coach Wood is a great coach. Uh, I knew we wouldn't have any problem going winning at all without him. He's a, he's a great man. You Bishop boys have been part of five of these six state titles. How did Matthew help prepare you for this stage? You know, I, when I was younger, I would, I was a ball boy, and I'd follow him around everywhere, you know, just picking his mind, listening to him, watching him compete. I, I think it helps me out there. <laughs> you know, he, he really is a good guy. I've just learned a lot from him. You know, he, he's talking to me over on the sidelines, keeping me calm, just telling me things I needed to hear. Well, today you reign supreme, Luke. Back-to-back -back state champ for Alito. Congratulations. Go celebrate, buddy. Guys. All right, Aaron, appreciate that. What a day he has had. Luke Bishop. Take a look at some of his highlights. Kind of stand out today. He made plenty of them, Indy. Yeah, when you hear dual threat, you know, guys use that term too loosely, but this is truly a dual threat. Guy with the feature with his arm, and you see how fast and athletic he is when he runs the ball. Also can throw the ball as well. There's that late touchdown, I believe, to Summerhill. That was big late in the first half. And then after this block, that's the go-ahead right there from Luke Bishop. Block courtesy of Jess Anders. And Anders had a big day. And pictures and everybody. There's holding up the MVP award. Offensive MVP. It's safe to say that doesn't happen too often. Offensive MVP of the championship game two years in a row. Not too many guys can claim to say that they are the most valuable player on offense in the state game twice. Well, here's a guy that's a senior. You know, there's some schools looking at him, but if you're a college coach, you're looking at a kid like this. He's 5'10", 5'11", 180 pounds. You, you look at the mindset of this guy. He, he comes from a winning program. You know what you're getting out of this kid. Just put him on the roster. You know, if some <laughs> coaches feel he may not play quarterback at the next level, one thing he is before he's a quarterback, he's a football player. He's just the type of guy that makes your team better, whether yeah. you use him as a slot, whether you use him in the Wildcat. He, those are the type of guys in college you want to have on your roster. Well, you know, all these games here in Arlington, a lot of college coaches right in front of the television watching it. Finding out about some of these guys that haven't made a decision yet. It's that National Signing Day coming up in February. There's a runner-up trophy. Mike Spradlin, congratulations on a fantastic season, of course, at Temple. Their last state title, 1992, but what a year they have had this year. Really had the community on fire for this football team. And now at this time, we would like to recognize the 5A Division I football state Heck champions. Heck of a run for them. The Bearcats of Alito High School. Yeah, Tim Buchanan is going to be involved here when they hand this hardware out. He's just to receiving it. Now he's going to help deliver it. <laughs> Texas High School state champion. There it is. Look at that reaction from Steve Wood. Definitely be a nice ride home for the good folks of Alito. Absolutely. A great turnout today for the Bearcat Nation. Same goes for Temple. Plenty of orange, plenty of royal blue in the crowd today. 
Everybody's got their hands on that hardware. You want to you touch it. You've, everybody's earned it on this football team. Yeah, you want to touch it. You want to hold it before it goes in that trophy case. All right. Well, that will do it as they continue their celebration here in Arlington. Once again, the final score, 49-45. Alito Bearcats, another state championship. Coming up next is four championship live with Rick Renner, Greg Tepper, Randy Rogers. That'll be followed at approximately four between Katie and Cedar Hill, the 6A Division II final that Kyler Murray continue his run for Allen. They'll take on Cypress Ranch. For Indy Kalou, Brooke Bentley, and Aaron Hardigan, I'm Randy McAvoy saying so long from Arlington. Another call.